Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, guys. I probably should have waited a second. <laughs> At least one second after finishing my onion bargee there. Covered in salt. Uh, before starting the episode. Hello everybody, welcome, welcome uh, to another part. We're doing post-game part two uh, for Secrets of the Obscure, if you're out of the loop. Essentially what we're, uh, we've done is we've beaten the story. We're now looking at a bunch of the side achievements and stuff. At one point, you know, I, uh, I named the first series 100% collections and 100% achievement complete um, type thing. I don't know whether I really want to do that anymore. Because looking through now, uh, I'm kind of in a weird place with this. It seems like a lot of so the collections is, is just go back yeah. and um, and sort of redo a bunch of events that we've already done. No, not collections. Wow, that's so weird. My instinct is always to go to collections there. Uh, so, like, there are a lot of things to do in the expansion. I mean, look at this. There's all of these. There's a bunch in Amatas. Was I already clicked onto that? No, that's Skywatch. This is Amatas. The Wizard's Tower has less, and we're, but still, you know, there's so much that I, I actually have to scroll before I start seeing complete stuff. The the rift hunting, I mean, so on the previous part, we did one on the Cursed Shore. It occurs to me that this would not be very fun to stream. Because essentially what it's saying is just sit about and wait until a T3 appears and do the T3. Do a T1, do a T2, and there you go. You're done with Curse Shore. Now do it again in the Skywatch Archipelago. Uh, do it again in the Bit of Frost Frontier. Do it again in the Blood Tide Coast. Do it again in the Crystal Oasis. So on and so I mean, yeah, I, I quite like that there's a lot of maps, and it seems, you know, to have fleshed out the expansion a bit, but I don't know whether that's really stream content. I don't think there's any, any lore or anything with any of this. So I'll probably start working on this off-screen at some point. Um... <clears throat> I don't know exactly when. Uh, I'm spending so much time in other games and doing other things at the moment. It's a, a weird thing, you know. I, I guess I'm in the, you know, and many of us will experience this, in the post-expansion slump or whatever. You know, I've had my fill of Secrets of the Obscure, and now I don't want to do the rift hunting. The other thing that's going on with the rift hunting as well is, apparently, it's so little rewards in terms of what we're going to need for the obsidian armor. I kind of think that the next patch, which is probably a month or two away, I kind of think that that patch surely will buff the stuff, you know, the, give us new ways of getting our obsidian armor. Like, I'll be very happy to go to the new map and do a lot more of that stuff, so... I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, um, yeah, so I was sitting there a minute ago thinking, um, while I was munching away, what do what do I want to actually do for the post-game here today? Just going through it, and I've, I've eyeballed... Now, if we just go to watch list, sorry, it's called watch list, it's the eyeball icon. All of these look pretty good. Um... We have Sorry's Lost, which we started on the previous one, which has really interesting lore and is like each time we collect a card, it's a potential future. Um, and we can we can go around for those. This should be simple enough as just reading the descriptions and, and moving forwards. Uh, what else did I eyeball here? Uh, the fishing we've had eyeballed for ages. I don't know, maybe that's not actually stream worthy either. Um, but the, the big one that I really want to do is this one here. It's a new friend. So... <clears throat> Secrets of the Obscure added the sky scale as a big part of its experience, and, you know, we have these fly- I don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg here. I don't know whether ArenaNet identified the issue with the sky scale with the game, and then decided to do an airborne expansion with the sky scale in it to address it, or whether they wanted to do a sky- uh, an airborne expansion, and then they just tacked the sky scale on. I don't know which came first. But the situation we're in is that before Secrets of the Obscure, there was the Sky Scale, which is frankly a really, really powerful mount. Um, and a lot of veterans had it, but a lot of like mid-core casual players, new players, people who have come in through the Ice Brood Saga, through End of Dragons, and through this mini X back now, they all wouldn't have had it. And there's kind of this big disparity between the existing player base and the new player base. And, you know, if Guild Wars is anything, I mean, I still believe in these old Guild Wars 1 philosophies, really. Uh, it sh that's that's bad. That's not the situation we want to be in. We're, we're not a rat race MMO. We don't want new people to be super, super behind. So, um, so it's kind of like this issue. It's like, how do you design maps? How do you figure content out when you don't know whether someone's even got a sky scale or not? So, quite smartly, ArenaNet do the first expansion, and they put a sky scale in it, a new way of getting a sky scale, and they even the playing field. And so now, forevermore, anyone can pick up Secret of the Obscure, a mini expansion, lower price point. They can just do that, and then they'll get the sky scale. And even when we're five mini X packs down the line, it's a self-contained story. It's available. It's accessible. That's what I thought was going on, you know. Um, but 
so and th- this was all sort of something we talked about before the release even came out and so I assumed based on all that information and the logic we've just expressed there that what would happen is you would play Secrets of the Obscure and you would instantly unlock the skyscraper. Well, okay, maybe not instantly, but throughout the course of the adventure, there would be like a side achievement you could do, and you just get the sky scale pretty free and easy, and there you go, you're fine. And 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 we've leveled the playing field because that's the point, right? Um, but I guess that's not what happens really. Like I was the whole way through the series, you know, the original, the story playthrough. I, you know, after we grab our first sky scale here, you know, you rent one, I guess. But I thought it unlocked the sky scale there. I really did. And I thought that then the progression with the sky scale was doing the masteries. But that's not the case. I've got a friend who played Secrets of the Obscure, didn't have the sky scale before, and still doesn't have it now. He's played Secrets of the Obscure, and he still doesn't have the sky scale. And that kind of blows my mind, because doesn't that break the logic? Doesn't that... Like, if you're a real net... So you are making the sky scale like a side prestige thing, a missable thing, a thing that casual mid-core players won't be able to get. We're not leveling the playing field. So I'm very confused about this. Um, and I want to know what's up. So for the current 90 days of Secrets of the Obscure's launch, there are obviously the Wizard Vault special um, objectives to go for. And as you can see, they've added a ton more in now, just ludicrous amounts of currency. Um, one of them is this, and this was here at the start, alright, this is like an OG. 300 Astral Acclaim, that's what it's called, isn't it? Uh, complete the new friend achievement. This achievement, the new, a new friend, that is the achievement that gives you the sky scale properly. So I guess what ArenaNet was saying is, okay, you won't get it for free just by doing the story, or even with a tiny bit of effort and alongside the story, but you will, we will point to it through the, the Wizard's Vault, we will do that. And I suppose that's a solution for this current 90 days. But what about all the years later in the future of Guild Wars 2's lifespan? I mean, are we thinking long term with this? So I don't know. I don't know what this is like. Um, I want to do that. So that's that's the big thing that I've eyeballed and I think we'll be looking at here today. I don't know. Can we get a whole sky scale in this one episode? If we can, then my friend's just a fool and he may as well just pick it up, right? Um, but I don't know. I mean, is there a lot of effort here? I really don't know. So we're going to go through that. Um... Separately, I have also, so Kerry's got this, I am aware of the fact that there is a super crazy sky scale skin that you can earn in game that is, uh, excuse my French here, it is fucking badass, it is awesome, it is uh, like a, uh, a Naos themed, a demon themed sky scale, and it is not on the gem store, it is a full fledged mount that looks amazing and it's it's like demon uh it's like bloody and fleshy and demonic and incredible so i want to do that as well so um i don't know whether well we definitely don't get that from this here is just unlock the sky scale um the astral wars sky scale which i think in itself is a slightly different variant to the original ones from dragonfall i think uh and then i guess this rotates into the prestige mount afterwards so yeah we'll look at that um what else is there that I've eyeballed? There's this achievement we picked up. Last seen researching relics at the Bastion of the Obscure. I mean, is this just do events? Basically, all the stuff that's just do events we've already seen, I don't see the worth of streaming. I mean, there's, a, there's another thing here, though, guys. If in the live chat there's really awesome Q&A back and forth, and, you know, there's a lot of rich conversation that doesn't get too doomery. Because I've noticed whenever I engage with chat, it gets really doomery really quickly. And I don't know whether that's chat doing that or that's me doing that. <laughs> it's probably me, right? I don't know. I guess I'm leading the band here, so to speak. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. As long as it stays fun and there's a lot of q and I'm happy to do fairly boring stuff. But, you know, I've always had issues with that kind of stuff. Anyway, and then, and then there's these two achievements here. There and back again. Nice little Lord of the Rings reference there. Um, ride a sky scale from the blue... Let's let's just do this straight away, because this seems really weird to me. And I it, I just prompted chat there, and I still haven't actually responded to anyone there. Give me a second here, guys. So, we're going to go to the Beacon of the Aegis. And I think we have to... We have to find the blue orb here, which I assume is high up above the Beacon of the Aegis. So, let's let's see if we can climb up. And, uh, yeah, while we're doing that as well, just as a generic sort of hello, everybody. Hope you're all having a good day. 
I, uh, for the first time, I've had a bunch of stuff coming from Amazon. I haven't bought things for myself for a while. One of them is, you know, I've got this new fish tank project. I'm si- uh, <laughs> This is gonna run sound really ridiculous, okay? But I'm still, air quotes, cycling it. I actually don't have any fish right now. But, look, don't think I'm a complete freak here that I've had a box of water for a couple of months now with nothing in it. Um, first, I'm not too confident about, the, like, the nitrates and the nitrites. Like, I have not seen a nitrite, nitrite spike, you know, the, the third tier. I have not seen that happen when I, you know, run the chemistry test. I haven't. And so that makes me a little bit nervous. Maybe it's already cycled, but why would it have done that so quick? The other thing is I put a bunch of plants in like last month, okay? I bought a bunch of plants, put them in, and I'm essentially just doing the aquarist thing right now where I'm just like watching how the plants grow, seeing which ones thrive, which ones don't. Anyway, one of the things I've just got, I've been meaning to buy it for a while, but like it's quite a deep ta tank. If if some if a plant dies and it falls to the bottom on the gravel, I've got to like dunk my whole arm in there, right? And like there's snails living in there and stuff now. Snail, you know, when I bought one of the, I don't know if I told this anecdote already. I'm really sorry if I did, but I bought like a plant and it had written on the the box, guaranteed no snails. And I didn't think for a second snails were a risk. But as soon as I saw that on the box, I was like, oh, okay, I bet there's going to be snails with this. And there were. There, so there's, basically, I have a box of snails is what I have at the moment. But anyway, so now it's like the water's a little bit grosser. I don't want to, you know, get rubbing up against any snails or whatever. So what I bought, and I've been meaning to buy for a while, but finally got it, is like a little uh, aquascaping toolkit thing, like 15 quid on Amazon. And essentially what they are, they're really long tweezers and really long, you know, little scrapers and things like that. So you can use the tools to go in the water and clean the stuff up. And by the way, it's not that I'm squeamish. I'm really not a squeamish person. I'm not a germaphobe really on any level. Um, but I, I kind of don't want to mess with the quality of the water either, constantly dunking my arm in there and getting sweat and hair and skin cells and stuff in or whatever, you know, it just, it makes sense to use the actual tools. So anyway, that's one of the things I got today. <coughs> the other thing that I got, by the way, I don't see this blue orb. Is it even higher? The other thing I got, and this is kind of a big purchase and I'm kind of umming an R in it on it. If it's not good enough, I might take it back. But Halloween is coming and I have a bit of a ritual where every year we play just a little bit so that we don't get too desensitized to it. We play Phasmophobia. I've mentioned it on a lot of these videos. It's like a Halloween ritual, and I play it in VR. Anyway, the Quest 3 came out. I think today is the launch day, and I pre-ordered one. So I actually have a Quest 3 in a box behind me right now. Um, it's, it's more expensive than the Quest 2, but the reviews are really good. Like, the whole sweet spot issue is, like, resolved. And the sweet spot problem was always the biggest issue for me in those games. Like, it was horrendous. I don't know whether my IPD was wrong or what. But... The Quest 2 was also just one screen. The Quest 3 is two separate screens that you can adjust independently. So it accommodates for a lot more, uh, you know, varieties of IPD and stuff. I can't believe that we've got a whole new Quest out already and that the Quest 2 was already like three years ago. But there it is. Wow, the map looks amazing here, doesn't it? The observatory looks really good. I wanted to say that's the Wizard's Tower, is it? I'm not sure. Oh, we must be in the wrong spot. So anyway, those are a couple of the things I got. Um, ride a scale scale, sky scale from the blue orb near the beacon of the Aegis. Waypoint. Ah, near the waypoint. So I've just been fucking about for no reason here. Ride it from here to the wizard's tower. It's a hell of a ride, guys. Hold on, the way- oh my god, that blue orb? Okay. Now that I'm seeing it, I'm remembering this very clearly. Okay, there we go. So, oh, I'm already, it's, it's already ticking, the time is already going. Okay, I can't touch the ground or enter combat. And I've got to get to the wizard's tower. Oh, this is cool. Wait, how do I do that? Okay, we need some height first. We've only got ten minutes. Ten minutes should be alright. For the tra traversal of an entire map on a super movement crept mount. I assume just holding space I will get to this. Oh, oh, really? No! Oh, uh, wait, 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 well, we can just... That doesn't remove it, right? Yeah, okay. We can latch on to things and boost. But we couldn't land, say, on that platform there. <coughs> Man, I'm a little bit ill as well. I very rarely get ill. And I hate pointing that out as well, because I feel like that's jinxing it, if I ever would. But, um... Yeah, I'm seriously, I'm, I'm kind of kind of sniffly at the moment. Apparently there's a big wave of COVID coming back, but you know, I don't have breathing issues right now. All right, this is about as good as we can get here. So we want to go to the Wizard's Tower, so I'm just going to...
If we could get onto that island up there, we'd be golden. This is crazy. I'm actually making the flight. Do you remember? I mentioned many times in the, the story playthrough that this flight here was, like, impossible without the mastery. But I'm doing it. Okay, I think what we're aiming for is that updraft. Oh, it's scary, though, isn't it? Oh, my God. I think we'll make it. Oh, please let me get to that updraft. There's also an achievement I don't have, a nice basic quick one, which is kneel with Palawa Joko's statue, or salute it, or something. Kneeling at Glint's statue in Jock's Forge is also one, which blows my mind, because I swear, didn't we do that? We, I spent so long sitting there explaining the whole situation to new people so that they would like understand what's going on. This is tricky and scary. How the hell do I get through this? I'm properly scared of this right now. Hold on, hold on. How do I get there? I see some orbs there, but the updraft didn't take me high enough. There's an updraft down there. Wait, where's the one I just... Okay. Oh, God. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. No, no, no. We're running out. Okay, no, we're all right. We're all right. We're all right. Look. There's like a, a helter skelter we can use here. We're riding, we're rising like a bird through, you know, a warm-up draft here. Okay, very good. Oh, apparently I have a mastery done. Can I just chill here? I can just chill here. Astral craft. Astral armor and motivation recipes can be purchased from Lear in the uh, Wizard Tower. Uncommon cryptic motivations can be used for the Heart of the Obscure to find Tier 2 Cryptus Rifts. Okay, yeah, one of the other achievements is to buy that whole Astral Ward armor set, which I really like the look of. It looks very, very cool. It looks very, like, um, <clears throat> Final Fantasy, big pointy hat kind of style thing, which you guys know I always go for. I have, like, the Chocobo appearing mount and so on. Um, and uh, I don't actually really like Black Mage in that game, I've realized, because, you know, I've been playing it a bit the past few weeks, past month. Uh... And I've been picking up my old classes and stuff. I've spent a lot of time this week relearning Monk because I was kind of put off by it, thinking it's too difficult, blah, 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 blah. But really, because it's very fast and there's a lot of, like, decision-making to go with it. Where do we go from here? Um, but I've kind of clicked with it now and I'm really enjoying it. Oh, God, the Wizard's Tower is so high. Can we get that with the Mastery? Oh, my God, the Mastery didn't really take me anywhere. Okay, okay, okay. Let's just relax here. <laughs> How much time have we got? Six minutes, okay. Honestly, I thought when I mouse over that, I was going to say like five minutes or something. I was going to be really, really concerned. Well, this is technically higher. Oh, what about the ley line? Oh, but it looks like it goes the wrong way. I don't want to go over there. And it looks like it goes down. I want that really badly. Let's try again. This is awesome. Oh, if I had the mastery available. Oh, that's a bit of a gate, though. 20 seconds. If I had my bond of vigor. Should we try? Oh, wow. That took me really high this time. I actually manually descended there, so I didn't hit the ley line. Okay, we're good. Right. Progress. This is awesome. I bet a bunch of people just use, like, taco or whatever. That's the same one, right? Those go down there. Oh, shit. Five minutes. I don't want to go down. This is taking me down. There's nothing there. Why do all these ley lines go the wrong way? If they went the other way, it'd be perfect. It's not a giant circuit, is it, maybe, that takes me there? Oh, no. I think I'm stuck now. This updraft at uh, Kaineng looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to go for that updraft over there, right near that ice. Just in the hopes. I probably shouldn't use the Bond of Vigor unless I'm absolutely confident. Like, that looks good. Ah, uh, look, 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 there's a little updraft. Surely the reverse achievement back again is going to be much better because I get to use that updraft. That ley line, sorry. How do I get all the way up there? That's insane! Oh, wait, wait, there's an updraft generator. Oh, God, have there been some of those and I just haven't seen them? Alright, oh, this is it. This is what I'm talking about. No, it's not. Keep going higher. Shit. Um... 
Oh, three minutes. Uh, there's some over there. I'm going for those ones. Oh, no. I, I, that's way too far, guys. That's way too far. I don't think I can get that. Oh, no. Okay, this is a huge risk. Please, 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 please. Okay, we got it. Nice, 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 nice. How do I get all the way across Drognar's Forge? This is insane. Turn me up. Up, 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 up. Go, go, go. Oh, there's some orbs there. That's insane, though. How would I ever get up to that? That's crazy. That's so far away. Anything? Hello? <laughs> Any? Oh, wait. Oh, draft generator. Hold on. Maybe this one's really insanely good. Oh, my God. It is. It is really insanely good. Oh, and there's one there as well. I think we're going to make it. Two minutes. Oh, God. Wait. What? No. The puzzle just keeps going. Okay. Obviously, there's those. I see those. I think we just got to go for it. It's a time for action. Oh, no, there we go. There we go. There's an updraft in front of me. It was just culled out. What's our timer? 2 minute 21. I actually feel quite calm now. I think we made it. We've made it. Go to the door. I'm going to go right to the door. And then we're going to read this. What does it say? Ride the sky scale to the southern gate in under 10 minutes without dismounting or teleporting. Okay. This is totally the southern gate. Go down, gently. I want it to ding before I hit the ground. All right, we're on the ground and the achievement credit is still there. Oh, there's another blue orb. I guess it's this one. Do I have to climb off? Oh no, I don't know what's going on now. <laughs> Do we dead? Oh, wait, 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 this isn't the southern gate. The southern gate is here. There we go. Oh, well done, ArenaNet. Well done. Bravo for not taking that away from me just because I landed at the wrong gate. That was fucking... That was a nice little bit of cushion right there. Okay. All right. So, Jesus Christ. I really need to get to chat. Okay. We've got, we got 10 minutes now to get back. Surely this one's piece of piss. Right? We just go this way. Yeah, okay, look, I'm looking at chat, because this is chill now. I can just go like this. Yeah, I know, I know, I wasn't at the gate. Sorry, there's a bit of delay. Yeah, I, um, I changed my YouTube stream settings ever so slightly. There is now, and I just want to get a feel for it. Because I'm... <sighs> I spent so long just ranting and playing the game, you know, I, I look at you guys are such fucking second class citizens on these streams, I look at you so rarely, uh, that I feel like if there's a bit of delay it's not too bad, so I've got, I've tweaked myself, apparently it's much better video quality now, but there is like a few more seconds of, of delay maybe, and I just want to get, I'm not saying I'm settled on that, I'm just saying I want to get a feel for whether that's really, um, you know, good or whatever. I could have landed at any point. What do you mean? Oh shit, it just says without dismounting. <laughs> oh, well what? Hold on, no, but that ruins it. That was a really good experience and now I find out that's not actually the experience. It's just without dismounting. What was the fun of that then? That's lame. Why is it just without dismounting? Clearly you got to fly there. That was cool, wasn't it? That was like a puzzle hidden in the map. That you wouldn't even realize and now I find out it's not that at all. And what's this one? This one is just hold W. I'm not even doing that. I'm just auto running by the way Or auto flying You can't rewind the stream now, which kind of sucks. Yeah, I turned that off as well. I forgot I did that I'm glad you mentioned that I've turned that off as well um, Basically with this whole Final Fantasy thing I'm doing the Final Fantasy series right Final Fantasy's coming back People have waited it two years for Endwalker now, and so it's going to happen. And I've, I've been in this huge debate, right, for, for this entire time. If you guys remember, I was doing Final Fantasy, and then right before End of Dragons came out, I did a, a series here on YouTube Live. When I very first started YouTube Live, I did the full Guild Wars 2 story. Do you remember? I did everything on a thief. Um, and, I, you know, YouTube has so much better setup. It's got the proper chat on the side that gets saved properly as a VOD. 
and you know it's got way better quality on on YouTube I'm streaming to you guys like 20 to 30 thousand kpbs a second on on Twitch I give I give you six six is the max max I'm on 20 to 30 right now and so it sucks to go to Twitch right but Twitch has like all the chat and stuff and it has like the cool features oh I, I should land near the orb so anyway, I've been I'm in an R and do I go back to Twitch or not? You know, because because YouTube's got really bad moderation and really bad features and stuff. So one of the things I was reading right was people were saying why is like the chat culture on YouTube so much worse? And one of the things is YouTube has this thing called DVR, and I've always had it enabled, where basically for a live video on YouTube, at any point someone can just rewind at the click of a button and go see what they missed. And that feels really good for like a user, right? Um, and so I've always had it enabled because I'm like, cool, that's a nice little feature that YouTube has that Twitch doesn't. I think Twitch does, but it's kind of annoying or whatever. So uh, I'm like, yeah, you know, that's good. But what that actually does in terms of like a chat culture and a community is it kind of ruins things in as much as someone will drop a message. I've never had a, per on a personal level, I've never had a problem with someone doing this, but someone will be like an hour and a half earlier and they'll say, hi WP, I'm an hour and a half ago, so I can't really talk or do anything, but hi. And then they'll just, they'll never speak again. But there's this weird, there's, there's this thing where like everyone's forced to watch at the same moment. Like if someone clicks this link to this stream right here, right now, we're all here, we're all together, we're all enjoying the same thing. We can all chat at once. And there's kind of like a cohesiveness and there's like a community building thing that goes on there. And that's just implicit to Twitch because it's not really an option. And so people kind of torpedo their own communities in a way by giving too much freedom to their users. Even though at a surface level it looks like that's the right thing to do. And you guys know me as far as like MMO designs. Like that's my MMO a lot of the time. I believe in restricting things but for the greater good and so on. So yeah, I think... Uh, so I'm trying that as well basically. I'm not settled on anything for what it's worth but I... I toggled that setting. I, I was just flipping levers, basically, and reading Reddit threads earlier in the week, and that was one of the levers I flipped. So hopefully it's alright. <clears throat> and obviously you can you can still rewind, and you can still re-watch re it once it's over, which is, like, one of the big things of why I, I wanted to come here to YouTube in the first place, was that, that sense of VODs and integration. But, you know, guys, it's been two years now, and I have to say, I watch my comments very closely. I don't really get messages on old YouTube live videos. It doesn't happen. That was my hope. My hope was that I could do a YouTube live series and years later, I would, or months later, I would get comments like, um, like people drop me Grimrock comments and people, you know, I literally two minutes ago had like an, uh, a comment on the last episode of Azeric saying the, the art design on this was brilliant, right? Like just Let's Plays, fully pr produced Let's Plays, they, ha they go the distance, they go long. And my hope was, oh, I can do Final Fantasy VI, I can do Tomb Raider, I can do this stuff on the YouTube Live, and I'll have the best of both worlds. It'll be easy to produce, and it will have the legs. But I think in truth it doesn't really, guys. I, th I think it doesn't work that way. Uh, so we'll, we'll see, but, you know, so I'm thinking... I'm thinking don't break it if it's not... Don't fix it if it's not broken. I think live stuff on Twitch and properly produced stuff on YouTube and so for the conclusion of 6, Shadow, 12, like lots of stuff that I'm doing at the moment, I think all of those will be just normal, properly produced LP episodes from now on. I'm thinking. I don't know, I probably shouldn't say all this stuff because then it tethers me to it. But yeah, that's just stuff that's been going on. Seems a bit of a shame to remove rewinding in the event someone won't realise their message isn't going to be read when they're consciously viewing back. It was a nice pausing for a break, then watching at 1.5 speed. That's a good point. The 1.5 speed is good. I mean, look, I don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not sailed on it. I think there's a lot of really good reasons to do the, the rewind thing as well. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, at the end of the day, if what's really fun about it and what makes it feel like an event is that everyone's kind of together. You know, there's a... Um, there's a like a, an, a, a comedian, I guess guy in the UK, uh, Richard Osman, who used to be like a TV show commissioner, and he like he would decide, he would like invent game shows that were cheap that you could put on TV and stuff, and uh, he, he's got a lot of really, really cool commentary on various things, and one of the interesting things I've heard him talk about before is, um, you know, if you were watching TV in the 80s, or if you, and this wasn't something I'd ever really thought about, if you were watching TV in the 90s, um, you know, if there was, like, some big episode of EastEnders going on, right? Like, Dirty Den or whatever's getting attacked by Mo, right? Spoilers for some old EastEnders stuff. <laughs> uh, the half of you won't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But, um... 
you know, when that happens and you're watching it on TV, everyone's there with you at that moment. And there's kind of a sense of, like, collectivity there. Like, you feel like everybody's in that moment. Everyone's together. Um, that doesn't really happen with TV anymore. And, you know, TV on demand and so on. And it's kind of like a microcosm of that, you know. There's one place where that does still exist, and that's with sports TV. Because, obviously, it's, street, it's, it's broadcast live. People want to get to it as fast as possible. So when it comes to live stuff, yeah, you still get that experience. Um, but, you know, there will be hundreds, possibly thousands of months in which people can watch this content as a VOD and they can rewind. Is it such a big price to pay to say for the first two hours of it? You can't, you know, if it's a two hour long episode, which a lot of these have been. All right, we're, we're, we're way too rambly here. We're way too rambly. I'll get back to you guys in a second. Let's see what we want to do next. That, those were both really fun achievements. I like those. Let's see. Okay, Sorrow Lost. Now, I set this up. Uh, not Sorrow Lost. A new friend. Um, raise a Sky Scale by completing Sky Scale collections from Sky Scale Trainer Deanne. All right, now, Sky Scale Trainer Deanne. Uh, has told me to get an abandoned sky scale egg now throughout these episodes you guys have seen me oh did the wiki change its icon that's interesting uh you guys have seen me finding these eggs these nests not eggs you've been seeing me find egg uh nests jesus um and every time i interact with them and nothing happens well we have a random chance every time we interact with a nest to find an egg in it and that's the game basically now for a first playthrough you can obviously just press F and see if you get lucky and maybe you guys did maybe some of you watching this are thinking to yourself was this a thing I just got one straight away well yeah it is a thing so like this nest but it's empty and we didn't find anything so, uh, you can do that for the first playthrough, but now that we've beaten it and we've been everywhere, what we can do is waypoint around like a maniac, and we can get them all. And as always, the Guild Wars wiki comes through uh, for us and has locations of every single nest easily found. There is also the chance that you could use Blish HUD for this, and I'm kind of interested in using Blish HUD for some of these achievements. I think that might make this content a little bit more streamlined and easier to go through. Um, but I'm not sure, actually. I don't know whether marker packs have been created for all the Secrets of the Obscure stuff. You know, we're only a month and a bit in, two months in. So, uh, yeah, I'm just on Wiki at the moment, on another screen, just looking. I think it's high up here, this, this nest. It's either high up or it's at the Inquest base that I was gushing over the other day. It's really difficult to tell. Base just put on the wiki map. I'll start high and then we'll go low because, you know, then we always have the choice. Oh man, we got a donation. I saw I had a donation earlier as well. Sorry. So let's do this. Uh, Sipasek, thanks man. Uh, donated 200 CZK. I don't know what that currency is, man. Do you want to let me know? Anyway, thank you very much. That's very generous of you. Thank you. AWP, a while back you mentioned you got all the achievements on Hades. Are there any other games you got all achievements on Steam? <laughs> That's a great question, man. Uh, it's a total tangent to the people who want just Guild Wars chat. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really like that game. I thought the story was way worse than most. Like people rate that as an amazing story because it's got like loads of dialogue in it. The truth is, it's a good story for like maybe the first first thirty percent, and then you beat the main game, and it's just really sappy and mawkish and just fucking boring. It's so boring. It's just people going on and on and on about, oh, thank you so much. That's it. Like, that's the story. Let's get over our differences with the party. That's... So, you know, the story I wasn't too into, but I, I really like the gameplay. Um, and yeah, I got all the achievements. My main motivation at the time for that, though, was because I was kind of into Steam at that time, like customizing my Steam profile and whatever. And you can, like, do a showcase on Steam with all your perfect games. And uh, I wanted Hades on that list because I liked the game so much. I thought, you know, that this would be a cool jewel for the crown, so to speak. Uh, so that's why I put the extra effort in. Um, <coughs> so you can actually go to my page and you can see exactly what I've done uh, in terms of, like, maxing out. And 
there's not many. There's like three games. There's three, which is pretty pathetic, really. One of those three is Soma, which you watched me get 100% completion with, with Matt Visual on that playthrough on Visual Wood. Because the studio that makes Soma frictional, they basically don't believe in achievements. So they just made them all free to get just through playing the story, right? So you don't have to do anything for the achievements on Soma. You just have to beat the game. It's just a way of tracking how far through the story you've got. And you can see me get them all, literally all of them, on that playthrough. So, yeah, that's one of them. So that's a total cop-out. We need to go to the soaring area. It's over here. I'm getting very confused. Uh, what's my third one? My third game. There is a third one. I can't remember. There's a lot of games I would love to be on that list. I'd love Stellaris to be on that list. I'd love, like, FF10 to be on that list, because I love that game. I did that Let's Play of it and stuff, you know, the remaster. But I did all of that before it came to Steam. So I never really played it on Steam. I did one playthrough on Steam for my girlfriend so she could understand the game. That was it. And I didn't get 100% achievements. And when you get to big games like that, it's like getting 100% achievements is fucking hard, you know? Like, they're asking for so much grind. They're asking for so much work. And I know there's the Steam Achievements Manager, like... If I've done it all just on console in the past, is there any harm me just using the Steam Achievements Manager to ding it on, on another platform? But I haven't quite gone that far, you know. You could even use Cheat Engine as well. As far as Stellaris is concerned, you don't get achievements unless you play vanilla. And I mostly mod that game, and I'm mostly, like, uh, excited about designing and writing mods for it, so... But then again, you could use Steam Achievement Manager anyway, and there's another thing where you can, like... There's a, there's a guide on Steam for that game where... And the devs definitely don't like this. And I'm only at liberty to talk about this, I think, really, because I'm not a content creator in that scene. But basically, they, uh... You can, like, hex edit the game or some shit. Uh, <laughs> so that it doesn't know whether you're on Iron Man or not. And then, therefore, you can have mods... You can have mods and achievements at the same time. We're looking for a nest. I can't see the nest. There's an achievement here, apparently. What? The body's still warm, and the colour is present in their skin. This must have been recent. Could I have saved them if I'd arrived sooner? No! We were running about steam achievements! Collect dog tag. Ah, this is the dog tag one, I see. Comrade in arms. You know, that's very doable, I think, as well. As long as we've got things to rant about, we could just walk to each body. Similar to how we're walking to each nest right now. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's a lot of games that I would love to have a bunch of achievements on, and I don't. Um, the most recent thing was Kerry bought me Ratchet and Clank, um, like around my birthday. And uh, I, I really liked that game. It came to Steam. To be honest, so if you guys don't know, the new Ratchet and Clank, the whole thing about it is um, it taps into the, the unique SSD technology of the PlayStation 5. So basically there are no loading screens. And seeing this... Insomniac went really ham on the game's design, like, in terms of, like, you're constantly portaling all over the play just in combat, and you're transitioning between different dimensions and different planets, and, like, really quickly. Like, you'll be on, like, a, a grind rail section, and you'll go through, like, five different, completely different, insanely cool areas, zero loading screens. Like, it's baked into the gameplay. It's kind of a game showcasing that PS5 technology. And when the game was coming out, they said this is a PS5 exclusive. And one of the reasons it's exclusive is because this is impossible to achieve on any other platform. This is a PS5 thing. And so, obviously, a bunch of PlayStation, uh, a bunch of PC people are like, yeah, oh, my, my PC is so, so much more expensive than a PlayStation. Obviously, I can do you know, do this. They're just, it's just an exclusivity deal. So, uh, then lo and behold, a year or two later, which is now, it came out. It released. Ratchet and Clank came out on on, play, on a PC. So I got a great PC. As you guys know, you guys helped fund my current PC. And so I was like, fuck yeah. I mean, I didn't really go crazy on the SSDs and stuff, which I somewhat... I still have hard drives, for example, which I somewhat regret. But, um... I thought, okay, cool, I'll play this game. And to tell you the truth, uh, I... I get loading screens on that game, essentially. Like, I'll go through a portal, and it will freeze. It'll, like, stall. And it's clearly loading. Like, low frame rate loading, and then finally I Ratchet goes through, you know? Like, it's not smooth. Uh, unlike as it is on the PS5. So, I don't know, maybe I need a better SSD, or I needed to install on a different drive, or something, I don't know. But anyway, it wasn't perfect. But I loved the game, and to go back to the achievements thing, um, I got a bunch of achievements on that. Like, a bunch, bunch, bunch. Uh, and I told myself, 
I'm going to get 100% and put it on the showcase, and I didn't. The reason I didn't is because you need to do a bunch more in New Game Plus, like to upgrade the guns to their new level and stuff. And the, upgrading guns in New Game Plus is really fun in Ratchet and Clank, don't get me wrong. I love that game. But uh, I just wasn't into it, to be honest, on the second run through. I just, I just kind of lost interest. So even that never made it onto my showcase. There you go. That's... I gotta say, that's one of the longest answers for a donation. That oh my god, we must be aiming for that water. We're not like, aiming for a bucket. We're aiming for that water. Oh no, this! I'm not gonna mount it out. We're gonna eat our greens. We're gonna suffer. There you go. Shit. All right, hold on. Let's try that again. I may have already got that diving goggles, by the way, but uh, I have no. When I before I started this episode, I looked at achievements we need, and there are a few diving goggle achievements, so I figured I'd go for it. And yeah, we just failed. I'm pretty sure though we already did that, didn't we? I quite clearly remember you guys in chat telling me, "Hey, WP, go into the water." <laughs> now, and now we failed it. Let's uh, let's try again though. Where was it? Up on that rock. You really get a good feel in this episode of how much sky scale helps with exploration. It's almost necessary for exploration in this map. It's crazy to me. So already I'm kind of a bit gruntled. Disgruntled at uh, this thing. Why have they locked the sky scale behind like a side achievement with a massive RNG gate at the start? I mean, is that fair? Should I call it a massive RNG gate when I've only gone to maybe six or seven nests? Why did that? Wait, where's my updraft gone? Oh, it was a generator. Okay. Are PCIe uh, SSD cards worth in chat? That's a great question, uh, Bushy. I'd love to hear what, what chat responds to you with that. I'd love to know the answer to that as well. That would be really good to hear. Uh, the other thing as well is... Um, uh, my PC, is, as new and great as it is, it doesn't have a certain kind of like USB slot on it. A USB slot that would be really good for like tablet drawing or, or like now that this Quest 3 idea is here... There, with the Quest 3, there's like you need a really good USB standard to power it or whatever. And I've been wondering if I can get a PCIe slot with a, like a supercharged USB thing on it. But I don't think that's really possible. I'm not sure. Amazon sells this thing for like £30, which is a lot of money for a single cable. It sells a thing which is like um, a double USB on one end. So like you, you have the, the mini USB or whatever standard and then a bonus one, which is just for extra raw power throughput. And I was thinking of that, but again, it's, it's quite a lot of money just for a cable, just for the, the luxury of charging while you're playing. But yeah, I, uh, I've i got it here, and I'm just... Um, uh, I just need to actually like set it up, and, and I remember the setup being a pain in the ass before. I think it's easier now. I don't think they require you to have a Facebook account or whatever. But I figured, you know what, before I start messing around with any of that, let's play some Guild Wars. I actually remember what the post-game stuff was. <clears throat> Otherwise, we're going to have a really sad post-game series. <laughs> it's just, just like one episode. All right, the water's over there. Okay, let's go. All right, just now notice they disable gliding while you're, you've got these equipped, which is a good little touch because it would mean you'd accidentally glide and lose eligibility. Let's see. Did we get this one already? Oh, we did. We did have that one already. Well, whatever. It's fine. Okay, back to the nests. Um, okay, there's one right up at the Wizard's Tower entrance, so how about we just go there? I guess from Drognar's Light. And there's another one, actually, near Drognar's Light, too. So, I'm going to scroll way up in chat as well, because there was another donation right when we started. And I really hope this person's still here. I didn't forget you. I'm really sorry about that, though. The delay. Uh, Robin DeHood with $4.99. Thank you very much for the five bucks. He says, I'm probably just coping at this point, and I've been burned too many times. But I think the next expansion will take place in the Isle of Janthir. Uh, I think you're probably right, actually. Well, I don't know whether you're right. But I think it's a good candidate. I think they've talked about the Isles of Janthir a good amount in this expansion. Um, in kind of a sneaky way where they didn't really have to say anything explicit. But they've sort of done it in a way that's like, hey, we remember this place exists. Don't worry, we've got ideas. Um, if you look at kind of the Guild Wars 1 idea where it's like, oh, they're going to drop a hint. And that hint will will mean something in the next campaign. You could say Isles of Janthir is that hint now. It's kind of hard to draw a line like that with Guild Wars 2, though, because they, they, they discuss so much so regularly. Um, 
you got to remember, it was a very different time for uh, fantasy writing if you were a Guild Wars 1 writer. Because it was all expansion at that point. It was all... You know, very little of it was, okay, let's honor stories of the past and let's expand on things we've already heard hints of. It's, let's just write a new hint and go to a new area. Write a new hint, go to a new area. You know, there's almost nothing about factions in Prophecies. Almost nothing about Canther. That was, they got to just fly by the seat of their pants and have fun. And the same with Nightfall. And, you know, it was only in Nightfall, at the end of Nightfall, really, in some side quests that they did some effort to like you know connect the stories together and so on um you know there's this thing about the whole guild wars one storytelling that i think i'm very inobjective about uh which is that you know i didn't care much about the story when i was younger and i never met anyone that cared about the story that very much and then as i grew older i cared more and as i grew older i noticed you know like other people cared a lot like I've, I've always talked about all things Guild Wars. What's the one thing people like me talking about more than anything else? Law. People really like law. What are, like, a lot of YouTube channels blowing up about law? Like, people really are into it now. But I feel like it never used to be the case. And maybe I'm in objective there, you know? Um, obviously, there have been certain franchises that were always big on story, but... I feel like that real excitement about game storytelling and stuff is, is kind of a newer phenomenon. I was actually quite interested on the whole VR thing. I heard a quote from John John Carmack the other day because you know the guy was huge in the VR space and he's left Meta now and there's all these interesting conversations going on. But apparently there's a quote from him saying that story in games is the same as story in pornography, essentially unnecessary. Now this guy's a genius and this guy, you know has paved a trail and created genres within the gaming space, you know. This guy is responsible for some of the biggest movements in gaming. And that's a, that's a hell of a quote. To say that story is unnecessary in games. And I mean, you can side with that argument as well, if you like. You can say, look at the most successful games, they're competitive games, they're eternally replayable games, and so on. You, you, you can see maybe some value in what was said there, but that, that's, that's crazy. Um, but that, you know, we're here, we're talking about, like, old guard establishment of various, you know, elements of the gaming industry, and I think that really was the vibe. People didn't really care that much about story, historically. Why am I talking about this? I have no idea how we got here from the donation. Anyway, thank you. That's very nice of you. There is apparently a Skyscale nest here, guys. I'm assuming it's up there, which is going to be a bitch to get to. So what we need to do is find a Skyscale generator, or... We need to, like, platform our way along. This is quite good. I'm quite enjoying the mystery of how I get... Should we do this rift? I mean, screw it, yeah. I'm quite enjoying the mystery of how I get up there. Even though I've been in this map quite a long time, you know, by now I would expect the Tangled Depths effect to be settling in, which is essentially, okay, it's a labyrinth and I'm annoyed by this now. You know, the labyrinth is fun the first time, but never the third, fourth, fifth. But no, I'm quite into this. I've got to think about what, how I'm playing then. I really, I've stopped PvPing, so I'm playing very little Guild Wars at the moment. And it always depresses the hell out of me how quickly, like, it all just drops out of my mind in terms of, like, what builds I'm playing and how I play them and so on. Alright, we got a card from that. Nice. Do I get to see the... Do I get to read the card? How do I... Well, okay, so we have a box of cards. The Oracle Decks. The Weeping Mountain, the Mother Sovereign. How do I know which one I just got? The Broken Mortar. Whoopsie. I don't mean to click that. The last set, the Tower of Secrets. This is the last one. Wait, that's card 16, right? How many cards do we have? No, okay. I was going to say, if that is the final card, like the final one, then I would take that really seriously. It's really grim as well, isn't it? It reaches for his grasp, wounded and fractured. I wonder what this one is, though. So 21 is the last one, the eye. The beast emerges, the spire entwined, put out the eyes, each and every one. That surely just means defeat Norris, right, in, in Meta Event 2. The beast emerges, it's a beast. The spire, we're talking about the world spire. Pow the eyes, you know, it's got loads of eyes. There's a mechanic to fight the eyes as a sky scale three fireballs at it. Clearly that's 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 Doom Matter too. 
There's actually so much. <laughs> With my wizard's vault, I mean, you guys might find this absolutely ridiculous. I still... Some of these are just do the metas again. Just do just do the meta once more. Unlock the wizard tower and fight Norris again. That's it. And I still haven't done them. <laughs> really. I've got 27 days. Maybe he just really likes story and pornography. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe that's, uh, there's an Uno reverse in there. Starlit Lantern, what is that? I think we're channeling. Okay, illuminate. Oh, right. Okay, yeah, this is the thing where once you've done map comp, you can go back through. You just press F on the POIs essentially now. Yeah. Uh, they started doing that with End of Dragons. It's not new, but instead of them being Jade Tech Lanterns now, they're Starlight, then. Starlight Lanterns. Okay, all right. I've got I've to gotta figure out how to get up there. This storm doesn't make it particularly easy. This is a big updraft, but we went on that already, and it didn't take us all the way up. So let's, let's see something else. Wait, hold on. I got an achievement but didn't notice due to the law discussion. Wait, which one? Wait, what? The sky scale thing? Surely not. No. Do you just mean the tarot card that we got a second ago? Oh, you can move while channeling. You don't need jade bot charges. That's interesting, Cossage. Oh, speaking of Cossage, so yeah, on the previous part, if you guys remember, we were doing the law achievement and... <coughs> Apparently we missed some dialogue, which was confirmation that the Vizier Kilbron was a part of the Wiz- Oh, that's brutal. I really thought we could connect on there. Let's try again, because I think we can. We just have to wait for our mastery to come back. Vizier Kilbron at the Vizier's Tower. That was all a part of the, the Astral Ward. He was connected to these guys. That's a crazy revelation. That's, a, that's, that's really fucking awesome and really interesting to think about. I've barely scratched the surface in my mind even of thinking about that. But the way you got that information was by, like, um... It was, like, between objectives, you had to go back to the NPC and, like, get extra information. Basically just a nightmare and not very well done. And so there was, there was a bit of fear on the previous part that we missed a bunch of other cool information from a bunch of the other steps. You know, if the Vizier re revelation was in one, what was in the others? Surely it was all really good. And I said to you guys, you know, I'll put screenshots on screen for you all of exactly what each of these things are. Uh, well, don't worry about it because people said uh, in Spuds that really there were no other real re revelations. That was the big one. And um, it's very unfortunate that's easy to miss. Oh, I did get the egg. What? You are joking. No, that's the wrong one. Oh shit, we did get the egg. Wait, wait, no, hold on. Well, well, when did we get the egg? What? I haven't I haven't interacted with a nest for ages. Are you serious? We did get the egg. All right, there you go. So look, it's not a bomb of RNG. That was like on our third nest today and I've maybe done I mean, I feel like I've done a lot of nests before today, but whatever. Oh god. A second ago, what I assumed had happened here was um, that you can actually hear I'm a bit nasally at the moment because my, my nose is blocked. Uh, I assumed this was just start the collection and then two was find the egg. I think when I, when I you know, very briefly looked at it a second ago. Okay, take it to Skyscale tra Trainer Deanne at the Beacon of the Aegis. Okay. So that's back at the start. I thought this was going to be the Wizard's Tower. Wait, I got in the wizard's tower. It took you 60 to find yours. Dude, are you serious? It took you 60. I feel like I've been getting very lucky in Guild Wars lately. If that's true, that you took 60 and you're the average person. I mean, are you though? Because you're saying it out loud. The average person isn't saying what they got. Maybe you're saying it specifically because you had an extraordinary situation. You know, that's the way of the internet, guys. You know, that's how the internet amplifies feelings of hysteria and you know extreme experiences so we can just run away because the only people talking are the huge outliers but when all the comments you read are outliers you lose sense of what an outlier actually is all right think about it the world's not as bad as it seems it's not as good as it seems 
It's kind of mid. <laughs> All right. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Sky scale trainer. I assume I get a marker. No. Is she the adventure lady? She might be the adventure lady. That's just a rift hunter. Rift hunter. Rift hunter. No, that's not even a lady, it's a Tengu. Oh, she's next to it though. Okay, hello. That's funny, they've got the big sky scale icon here. That should really be on the world map, shouldn't it? Good to see you again. You've got the look of someone who comes to life when they saw high above the clouds. What can I do for you? Okay, well, I found an egg. Oh, there's dialogue. You found the egg abandoned, I assume. Let's take a look. You've raised one before. I can tell by your posture. Confident. You know how to handle a baby. Unfortunately, I'm down a trainer. I could use an extra pair of hands hatching the child and preparing it for flight. We're embarrassingly short on supplies here. Just about everything is needed in Omnitas. I have a list of tasks. Short, I promise. I'll give you the details. Short, sure, I promise. Look at that. That's a, bit, a very real commentary there. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what we're looking for here. If I've established anything from the start of this, is we're looking for it to be short because it's supposed to level the playing field. Infuse your sky scale egg with the necessary magics, then bring it to the sky scale trainer. Swim to the bottom of flooded Castaval in Blood Tide. Get burned by lava in the Great Imperial Smelt in Black Citadel. These are both easy so far. Encased in an ice prison caused by ice storms in Bitterfrost Frontier. Or during the Claw of Jormag World Boss. That's nice. Two very different maps, different areas of the world, but same theme idea. Take damage from quicksand in Dry Top. Interact with the Cluster of Winds in the Hidden Jumping Guard. These are all really good. Revive 20 allies. Where would we do that? I'm thinking maybe like a town in Kryter or something where everyone's been attacked. Defeat 100 enemies within or around the Blood Hill camps. 100 enemies. That's quite a lot, actually. For Guild Wars, that's a lot. I know there's like this classic MMA thing of like you wouldn't bat an eye at that. Garden patch, yeah, the grow. This is good. I'm alright with this. This seems really good. Let's let's get started, okay? So the sky scale of water. Now what I feel bad about right now is I don't really remember in terms of like world tour stuff what we did for the original sky scale. Like I remember playing fetch with it and stuff. I remember a lot of time at the Sun's Refuge, and just to be clear, to put a point on this, I really liked the original Skyscale collection. I never whined about the grind, I never thought it was that crazy, but you know, that's as a veteran player that got a bunch of currency every release, and had things in abundance, and was already done, you know, blah 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 blah, I get it, I had a very different experience to someone who's just, who was just moving in a year ago to do it. Nowadays, they just get this, hopefully. But uh, yeah, was there a world tour moment of the previous Skyscale, had us do exactly this? I mean, I'd be okay with that. I kind of like the idea that new Skyscale owners and the old Skyscale owners have, you know, shared experiences. But I guess the risk there is, oh, people will call us lazy. All right, let's swim up. So that we break combat. <coughs> uh, the Great Imperial Smelter. This one's quite nice because you never used to actually be able to step into this thing um you know there were visible walls everywhere but when they added like i think it was with gliding that they changed a lot of this it might have been when they added the sky scale but i think it was gliding so shortly after heart of thorns they opened all this up so now you can just jump over but that used to be an invisible wall this is all just background funsies there you go so we've been burned or rather than my bony raptor has been burned i really like this raptor have i got like a is it alternating on this? No, it's always this one. The randomized feature is so good in Guild Wars, where you can like favorite different things and then like a different mount will come on every time you tap it. I really like that feature. And um, you know, in Final Fantasy, they've got a similar thing, like almost exactly, which is really good. They call it roulette there, mount roulette. Uh, but there's a thing I wanted in both games. I was talking to Rocker about this yesterday, uh, which is like with minis. I really like minis. So right now we have like this mini Shiba Inu. I don't really care about this one, to tell you the truth. Um, so, you know, but like the mini monkey, he's cool, right? I've got a bunch of favorite, obviously. Let's just click randomize. So the thing is, in Guild Wars, that's the monkey right now. 
it's not going to change until I load map. So we can go to the next map. Let's do Bitter Frost because I don't know what the world boss time is like. Because there's no native world boss feature. There probably should be. But let's go up to Bitter Frost. Um, so when I load map, this will change the mini. And that's okay. But, you know, with the way that you play the game, a lot, it's, uh, it's not good enough, I think. In Final Fantasy, I've got a thing set up where I have a macro where every time I unsheath or resheath my... Well, just when I sheath, basically. My mini swaps. Like, you can set that up in that game. So I kind of have this really cool thing where, like, I've got a Tonbury mini and I've got, like, a Cactar mini and I've got, like, um... What are some other ones? I basically picked all minis that feel like quintessential Final Fantasy kind of characters. Like, I think I've got a Moogle. But I don't have, like, a really good Moogle. I need a good basic Moogle. I think I have, like, a Moogle that's, like, dressed like Stormblood clothes or something. Anyway, every time I move in or out of combat, it swaps the mini and the, uh, amongst my favorited ones. And that works really well. I've got, like, Alpha, you know, the, the little chocobo. That's one of the minis I've got. That one's brilliant. And I would love Guild Wars to have, like, this randomized feature is on map change. It should be on, like, in or out of combat because then it happens regularly enough. You know, if I'm just in a single raid instance, for example, and we're wiping on, you know, Massar Overseer for ages, uh... At least I get to see my different minis a lot, you know, rather than it just... Does this count as being in ice? It occurs to me this is not being in ice. Uh-oh. Alright, that's not being in ice, is it? Oh dear. Hold on, what do we do? Any first party macro system adds so much depth? Yeah, it's an interesting thing, you know, because I, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about what my dream MMO would be, my perfect MMO, and I write a lot of it down in this little, like, guide feature thing, uh, guide project thing I'm doing. And, um, I, 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 I'm not settled on macros. Because one of the things I really respect about Guild Wars 2, and I really like about Guild Wars 2, and you guys are going to be baffled by this, you're not going to like what I'm about to say, you're going to think this is stupid. But, oh, hold on, what if I just walk into this? Will this freeze me? Yes, it will. Wow, something in my head there. Something in my reptilian little brain. Reminded, made me think of that. My God, I'm so sniffing. I'm sorry. I, I don't want to make snot noises into the microphone here. I'm really sorry. Uh, yeah, I don't know, though. One thing I really like about Guild Wars is that you can't customize the UI very much. You know, it's like Arena that sat down and they said, no, fuck the UI customization. 99% of players are going to make our game look ugly as hell. Look at how the WoW players changed their UI. You know, Final Fantasy wasn't out. Well, it was for a brief window. Right, Pete, the gamers will will optimize the shit out of it and it will just look awful to anyone except their own eyes. We don't want that. What we're going to do is we're going to make a really good functional UI and it's not going to be very customizable, but it's fine. It's brilliant. And you know what? If it's lackluster, the UI that we d dictated, if it's lackluster, well, look, we have the incentive, we have the motivation to improve it. We will make it as good as possible. And Arena, you know, they stuck their flag in the ground. They said, this is what it is. And everyone has that unanimous experience. And there's little things you can tweak. You know, you can put the chat box up. You can swap the mini, back, the mini map to the top if you like or whatever. But they've got a pretty coherent idea of what they want your game to look like. And they, they did it beautifully. And I kind of really respect that. I really like that. That they just... They worked their asses off. And, and they made a great UI. Uh, Guild Wars' is UI and the polish that's on it is one of the reasons why it stood out. Um... And macros are kind of a similar thing to me. It's like, you know, it's like a, a band-aid that like the upper 1% are going to fuck around with. But most of your players won't be actually getting that experience. And so I, I don't know. I'm kind of like split on it. You know, how customizable do you want to think? And I kind of feel that there's a really interesting conversation with regard to that with everything. Like every little game option that goes in. You know, people should have some control about their experience, obviously. But... To what degree, you know? Anyway. Um, okay, quick uh, damage in dry top to quicksand. Nice, easy one. You have your map at the top, like Guild Wars 1. You know, I actually, in all games, if there's a mini-map button, Guild Wars 2 doesn't actually have it, really. But if there's a mini-map, I always bind it to you. Specifically because of the Guild Wars 1 bind of it. You, dare you know, there's little stuff like that that's just influenced me forever. Um, I also realized kind of recently... Guys, let me just ask you this question, just nakedly, all right? You're in an RPG, and you want to open your your spell, your spell book, your skill menu. You know, you want to look at your list of spells, all right? 
to slot things in out. Now, I'm asking you guys this, presumably Guild Wars players. As Guild Wars players, you know, we don't really have a spellbook menu. Not really. Not in Guild Wars 2. So, what button do you press for that? That's my question. What is your button for the spellbook? For the skill menu? Because I always thought that that was like one of those de facto things. It's like everyone knew what that button was, and it's consistent across all games. But it's actually not. So, Hidden Garden. Okay. This one's going to take a little bit longer, but it's a great place, so I'm so happy to do it. Oh my god, I really need to blow my nose or something. Here we go, we got some, some coming in here. T, K, okay, a lot of you guys are saying K. B, somebody says B there. Now, for me, it's K. And it's K because, you know, it's skills, the K in skills. It's obviously not going to be S, that's W, S, and D. But it's K to use your skills, your, your skill book or whatever, and that's the Guild Wars 1 bind. And I swear to God, all the old RPGs used to use K. I swear that that was consistent. But I think it's not actually, like, doesn't World of Warcraft have a different button? I think Final Fantasy has a different button. It's not, it's not actually what you think it is. And so I, that sort of blew my mind, you know. It's kind of like the whole, um, you know, a well-known debate on this is uh, E or F for interact. You know, you play like a Valve game and it's E for interact. You play like a Bethesda game and it's F for interact. And, you know, any game you can imagine that has an interact button, it's, it's going to be a random pot shot of one of those two. Guild Wars, of course, uses F. But it's all over the place, right? I feel like on that, my little take on that is first person, it's E. Third person, it's F. I don't know why. But that's kind of my feel. If I'm in first person, I expect E to be my interact button. If I'm in third, I expect it to be F. And actually for Guild Wars, I don't have it as either, actually. I use F for skills. I use uh, a numpad button for interact because it's on my Logitech G600. And the moment I'll spy yours today. Uh, what do they want us to do in here again? Cluster of winds. Oh, just so okay, just climb up. That's interesting. Most of these have asked us to be getting hit by things, but well, the cluster of winds isn't at the top of the tree, I don't believe. This looks very like uh, grayed out at the moment. Like it needs a lot more contrast. What's going on with the shadows over there as well? That was weird. Probably too used to using reshade. I'm so into post-processing graphics that stuff. I think on the last part I mentioned, I was like, uh, you know, I don't want to use reshade because it takes away from the pure experience the devs give you and all that, right? And I had some nice comments of people saying, you know, that's really profound. That's really nice. Uh, <laughs> but now I've just like gone crazy with special effects and stuff in Final Fantasy. <laughs> so I don't know. B for bags. Yeah, that's a wow thing. See, for me, it's I for inventory, you know. Of course, if you really go back, interact is the space bar. I just want to make that point as well. There are a lot of old games, like properly old games, where you'd press space to interact with things. You know, LBA2, the game whose music you hear at the end of all my videos, I've never Let's Played or anything, but in that game, you would toggle between different, like, forms. So when you're in, like, an aggressive form, space is attack. But when you're, like, in your sneaky form, space is to, like, crouch down. And when you're in your, like, normal form, space is to interact. So you can only actually interact while being normal in that game, you know. But it was all on the space bar. They didn't really want to use the other buttons. Place egg. There you go. I always like interacting with these. You get a bunch of uh, 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 opportunities based on what um, legendary collections you're in the middle of. Sky scale of life. Okay, revive 20 allies. Like, I don't know, my instinct on this, right, I might be wrong, but my instinct is to come here, because quite often that place has been, like, attacked by crate, and all the citizens are dead. And you could just revive them all. And on an Ellie, we can do that extremely comfortably as well with the geyser build. So let's see where it is. That's an alacrity healer, but I think I have an arcane healer set up as well. 
yeah, Arcane Resurrection Healer. And to be honest, for our purposes right now, we could run Glyph of Renewal as well, and we could use it in Earth. And res three bodies at once with it. Let's see if I'm wrong. Looks like I'm wrong, it's fine. But usually there's a bunch of dead people here. Do you guys have any ideas about where I might find a ton of dead people? I mean, Ore usually has a bunch of bodies as well. Like when the meta is off, off the right tick, the signal peaks, probably got a bunch of people dead at it. Let's go back to FF11 times where space was to type in chat. That's interesting. See, I'm, I, I don't really have any experience with that game. A lot of those old 3D MMOs, I, I really I don't didn't have much of an experience with because they were all sub fee games, you know. And not having my own money, they were off the table for me, you know, growing up. World versus world. Oh, I don't know whether I want to go messing about in World vs. World at the moment. Lead a champion to a bot farm. <laughs> That's a good idea. Create my own bodies. It's like having Baldur's Gate when you play a necromancer. You actually, like, take people's corpses and store them away at your camp. So that when you sleep at night, you can wake up the next day and take the corpses out of the crate to resurrect them so you've got zombies. Like, that's so, you know, it's busy work and it's kind of tedious, but it's such a, like, brilliant, lewd narrative display there. I, I love it so much. Oh, look, there's Will asking why we can't rewind the stream today. So people were using it. But I think that's a good sign, because that means you're here in chat now. Yes, I did talk about that, Will, and you can check it out. The, the fact is, guys, I might not be... And again, don't tether me to this. I might not be YouTube live streaming much more. I think I might go back to Twitch for, for live stuff. And just put the VODs on WB2. And I'll keep YouTube specifically as a, uh, a video thing. Because I think something else that's going on is... I'll do a video like this today. And I'll be like, there you go, I, I've, I've made some content, you know, I've, I've, I've interacted with people, I've, I've played Guild Wars, I feel refreshed, I've done this, I've done that. But, because there's like a big contingent of people, and, and so I won't feel any need to do a normal video today. I don't feel any need to do a normal video. But, it's, it's not the same really. A lot of people won't click this, or really, they won't look at this. So it's not, really I should do a normal video. But if I'm just doing Twitch stuff... I will always be like, I should probably do a normal video as well, you know, there's something about the motivation there that's probably much smarter, you know, I've probably burned these past two years not being productive enough. I think that's a part of it, you know. Um, so yeah, I might not be doing many more YouTube live things, you might find me doing Twitch stuff. And the VODs would just be on WP2. Oh, you don't like or use Twitch? What 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 is it you don't like about it? Everyone, I mean, ultimately, it's the same thing really, isn't it? <laughs> You don't follow it, so you're not missing streams. Yeah, I mean that's on me though. Really, I should use my. I don't. I don't tweet at all since it became X or anything. I haven't tweeted. I haven't done a tweet for ages. But like on Discord and stuff, there should be ways people to fi figure it out, even if they're not. Con you know, they don't have the tab open or whatever. I get that. The whole visibility thing sucks. One of the coolest things about here's some buddies. One of the coolest things about YouTube in terms of visibility, right, is anyone on my channel right now, like. Let's say someone's watching my Guild Wars 1 playthrough right this second. They have a little notification. Can we get all three? We might be able to. They have a little notification on their video player. Oh, we missed them. Uh, that says WP's live right now. That's so cool, isn't it? Like, it's like embedded on there. I love that. That wouldn't happen when I'm on uh, Twitch. Keep the hostels off my back while I try to fix the mess you made of It myself. sucks. It sucks that you've got it's like two different platforms and one's you good at one thing was... and one's good at the other and you kind of got to pick your poison, you know, it, it does suck. I kind of was hoping, back when I did the big Guild Wars 2 replay before uh, End of Dragons, you know, I saw that there were shit things about uh, YouTube and I sort of thought, you know what, they'll probably improve that over time, they'll probably get better with it, but they just haven't, you know, it's been two years and they haven't done anything, <laughs> I don't know if they ever will. I mean, surely, eventually. Why not dual stream? It's actually against the terms of service on Twitch to do that, believe it or not. And I'm kind of small fry, so it doesn't... I, in theory, you could just break that rule until punished, but I, that's not really in my character. Um, and when I say it's against the term of service, I don't just mean for partners or whatever. I think it's just 
globally, again, technically against their terms of service. I googled it the other day. Also, there's a bunch of technical issues there, and then there's a weird thing where it's like, okay, Striker Jaken just said something in chat to me here. And if I'm talking to him, people on the other platform don't see his message or know, and it, that's a bit weird. I, I, maybe there's a way you can set up bots that cross-pollinate the chats and stuff, but I mean, we're getting a bit, a bit crazy at this point, aren't we? Did they change it? Well, I googled it, like, this week, and from the horse's mouth. There was something that they changed, but... Okay, the thing that they changed, that I read they changed, was the 24-hour limit. There used to be a thing, and whoopsie, I never actually adhered to this. There used to be a thing where they wanted you to wait 24 hours before you put your VOD on another platform. That was a thing, and they have changed that. They've said that you're allowed to do that. But multi-streaming, they, uh, they don't call it that. They call it simulcasting. I mean, I have no idea why it's got that name, simulcasting. But anyway, uh, they don't want you doing that ever. They say it's technically against their terms of service. I'm pretty sure that's what I read. I mean, maybe if you've got like a special contract or whatever, you're allowed to do other things. But I think for us general plebs out there in the world, normal people, I don't think that's it. You can check whether the Conan event is up near Honor of the Waves, the one that has you to revive allies. Okay, that's a cool idea. I'll, I'm open to some advice from chat here. Honor of the Waves. Do you think there's a... I don't know what you're talking about, to be honest. I've never done this event. Do you mean, like, the camp to the south? Oh, there's a lot of bodies. Nice, man. I never would have guessed this. Some are likely injured and need help getting back to shore. Look at that. So what have you just got us? Ten corpses, though? Try Nibu Terrace and Gendara in the heart there needs you to revive Seraph and you can go north and slaughter for the egg. Oh, there's another thing for the egg there as well. That's very efficient, isn't it? <coughs> yeah, there you go. Endmaster said, yeah, it's not allowed. They've made a concession for short form video services, which I think I'm anything but, right? I wish the whales and Guild Wars were a bit bigger. It's funny because that used to be a huge spectacle to me, but nowadays it's not so much. Oh, earlier, by the way, I wanted to comment on this. Cossage pointed something out from... Mooplis did a, uh, like, an interview some with some writing injured. devs, some story devs, I think, or something. And apparently I'm mentioned in it, uh, which is really cool and really warms my heart, and that's awesome. Um, I haven't actually seen it, though. They, they Mooplis messaged me on Discord the other day and said, hey, check out this link. They mention you in it. And uh, I said, oh, thanks very much, but I haven't actually seen the content. I kind of get a bit nervous about stuff like that. I kind of don't like uh, thinking the devs interact or like watch any of my stuff at all. I don't know. I... But uh, but yeah, that's, that's really cool. And I don't know exactly what was said. This is the search the water for castaways that voiceover repeats Cold so often. That's funny. I don't really have any memory of this event at all. Genuinely. See, these aren't from one of the waves either. They're from the Slough of Despond. Search the waters for Slough? Places. Slough of Despond? I think that's Slough. Need help getting back to shore. They mentioned me in my lore videos and how much they, they like them. I mean, that's really sweet. I kind of wonder what lore videos they mean, though. Because, I mean, what lore videos have I made? I haven't done a Guild Wars 2 mystery for ages. I haven't done that, like, actual, you know, like, the arty lore thing since launch. And, uh, you know, maybe six months after launch. You know, I do q and I talk about lore all the time, and I do playthroughs and stuff talking about lore. Does this count as a lore video, this right here, right now? A big Kraken would be cool. Well, I think the idea of an underwater-y kind of expansion is still very much on the table. Someone mentioned earlier the Isles of Janthir for the next mini x pack. I'm very much on board with an underwater thing, too. I think the top of my list is depths, as I said. This is interesting because I don't actually get a counter for this. It says revive 20 allies, and due to the way that the uh, achievement is structured, I don't get to know how far into those 20 allies I am. It's time for a live react to the interviews, Gabu. <laughs> Do you know what's really shameful, right? 
I don't really remember who Gabu is. <laughs> or why that's an emote. <laughs> that's so sad, isn't it, as well? That's like a thing. That's like a community thing. And I don't really remember. I mean, I know he's a goblin. But I don't remember what expansion he was in. I don't remember why he was of any note. <laughs> so, look at my buffer. Oh, you're right. My buffer. That's true. Well, shut me up. There is a way to tell. I've also got Courageous. Gained by defeating world bosses. It will be sufficiently infused at four stacks. Also, we're going to have to go to event timers and kill some world bosses. In fact, I might do that right now. <coughs> Just because it might be more intelligent, you know? Like, if there's a world boss right here, we can weave them in and out, you know? It's, it's more efficient. We can also res people. The Mega Destroyer is going on. Mega Destroyers are actually good for me because I want to get memories of Primordus or whatever it is. <laughs> and I need to kill him. We're in combat. There we go. I've got a real temperature as well at the moment, guys. Can you believe that? I hope I'm not sick over Halloween. Uh, What am I doing here? Jesus Christ. So lost. Map too big. Map too big these days. Gabu is Sid's dad. I mean, I remember the Sid's dad stuff. I promised to always remember Gabu. Did I? I'm telling you guys. Again, I was saying this to Rocker. I, I think a full playthrough is in order. I really do. But, you know, the last playthrough was very long. But it was because I was doing all the side stuff as well, you know. Like, if you actually looked at it, I would do, like... Uh, one of the games you could do in like seven days and then the post patches was like another four days on top of that that's it it's over then but um when you add in all the other stuff like the raid series the alliance series all of that that's when it really started to blow because it was like okay a whole day on just part one of the raid series and then a whole day on part two of the raid series and then a whole day on part three of the raid series and then congratulations you've done the raid series now do the same thing for alliance now do the same thing for trials right now do the same thing for fucking eureka and bosnia and all that it's just it just goes on and the deep dungeon and stuff and i in theory i could cut all that away on the set on a, on a recap playthrough Wow, you caught me live. Hey, man, that's awesome. Game Freak, thanks. Creaked voice. AED. Is that a currency? Is that a donation? That's a super chat, right? Thank you, man. 100 AED. Thank you, dude. When I read AED, it makes me think of the engineer heal skill. I didn't actually know that was a currency. Wait, catastrophic eruption in 16 minutes. Okay, let's, let's, not, let's not do that just yet. We can come back in a bit. Um... What else do we want to do? Defeat a hundred enemies within or around the Blood Hill Camps territory. So this is what uh, this other person was recommending. Now this could be good because we could kill all these wargs in this pen. And uh, that might be quite quick. Let's get rid of the resurrection build. We definitely don't want that. Let's do Celestial. That, this template is called Open World template, Tempest, but it's not a Tempest. It's a, 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 a Catalyst. Oh my god, I'm trying so hard not to sneeze right now. Oh my god. Can you guys do that thing where you like crinkle your nose and it's it, it, it drives a sneeze away? You know, you have like that sharp, tickly feeling and the sneeze has come, but you crinkle your nose just right and it fixes. That's what I'm doing constantly. Weakness makes me sick. <laughs> Eduardo, thank you for the three bucks, man. Guys, we're very, very uh, generous here. Let's celebrate the first, their first super chat on the live stream. Oh my god, that's the first one ever. That's really cool, dude. <laughs> that's so dry. That message. Let's celebrate their first super chat. Yeah, that's what YouTube is to me. You know, Twitch kind of gets it. Like, if Twitch was doing that, there'd be a bunch of exclamation marks and zoomery bullshit on there, like really to pump Back people up. Twitch feels like half the shit on here was obligatory made to try and form some kind of parity with another platform and with no, like, no love or real enthusiasm. You know, it's just people cashing a check. And there's a big difference there. I am hearing rumors about an escape you can put your tongue on the top of your mouth to stop a sneeze. Really? By the way, this is bizarre. 
I don't know, chat? Does anyone have any concept as to why on earth this either thematically or mechanically is a part of making a sky scale? The sky scale of blood is the theme. So Blood Hill Camps, that's it? Because it says Blood Hill on it? I often get the impression that when writing objectives and things for people to do, the, the arena net devs have no real idea, but what they do have is a spreadsheet or a list of area names. And they're just like, all right, just control F on that list. And if you see the word blood, just pick that, right? Or like of POI names. Like that's how it feels like most like legendary collections and stuff are done. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they had a handbook for, you know, like, new devs or whatever, and they're going to make some achievement collection. It's like, best practices for achievement collection stuff. Head over to this spreadsheet and control F for a word that matches the theme of the thing you're going for. Because it's always just, like, just vaguely related to, like, what? Well, there's nothing bloody related. What? What? There's nothing here. Okay, if I was going to do the sky scale of blood achievement, what would I have people do? Well, my first thought is, are there any rivers of blood in the game anywhere? Actually, none that come to mind. My next thought is, is there anything vampiric? Any kind of, like, vampire mansion or something? Weakness also, no. Actually, Guild Wars 2 doesn't really do very well with the whole blood theme, does it? Naos kind of fits. A lot of the new demon-y stuff kind of fits, but it's not a full-fledged place yet, so they can't really do that. What's bloody in Guild Wars? A very crimson area or content piece. Bloodstone Fen? I mean... That's just as bad as this, really. It's just the word blood. Yeah, it's kind of got a crimson hue to the place, but... There's not really blood everywhere there, is there? It's just... It's called the Bloodstone because it was sealed by blood with King Doric, but, you know... I mean, it, 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 that's just as bad. I'm sorry. It's just as bad. There are the vampire enemies in Heart of Thorns. That's a good point. Like the blood suckers. Yeah, maybe that. But then again, can they actually... Can they do this collection that would make you go to Heart of Thorns? Does it have to be Corteria? So that's another issue. See, it's not so easy, is it? It's easy to criticise, but try and do it yourself. Maybe there's something in awe. There's like a bloody kind of... I mean, there should be somewhere, right? Isn't there a place called, like, the Sanguine Bay or some shit in, um... Lornar's Pass down here? Oh, no, the Demon's Moor is what I was thinking of. Doesn't really count. Weakness makes me you think they picked it purely for the large en number of enemies and high respawn rate? No, no, no. I think you're putting the chicken before the egg there. I think they picked this place because it was called the Blood Hills. And then they were like, okay, we want you to kill enemies. And they're like, oh, there's fucking loads of enemies here. We can make that number quite high. I think that's the order they happened in. I don't think that they were like, okay, this has to be 200 enemies. All right, now let's find a place on Tyria that's, that's adequate for that. I mean, maybe they did. And then they settled on the blood thing later. But I mean, each egg is clearly like elemental, right? That's an interesting thought as well here, by the way. They kind of have an element system here. Water, fire... Ice, earth, air, life, blood, growth as an element. That's interesting. Death, growth and death. I guess these two are opposites. Life and blood are opposites, maybe? I would kind of think of blood as a subcategory of life in a way. Uh, death and growth, spirit and fear. Courage, and then we're done. So actually, courage and fear are antonyms. Spirit and death are antonyms. Growth and blood. Life and air. It just kind of breaks at that point. Not that everything has to be paired or whatever. I like these. These are good elements. It's one of my favourite things to look up online and think about. Like, cool element systems. Kind of icons you'd have with them. How they'd work. Your victory will be short-lived. 
The Skalk in the field south of the accounts. It's where you got your revives as well. Yeah, there's probably some dead bodies over there. Let's go do that. It's probably a bit boring to just watch me fight centaurs forever. There's a big bone pit here at the Blood Hill camps. Has involvement in the human personal story, necromancer stuff. Oh, you're talking about the, the cave, right? You're talking about this cave. That's true. It's a little bit further. I would call that the Hezran outcrops more than anything else. But yeah. yeah, you meet the priestess of Grenth there, who comes back right at the end of the story. Um, Weakness makes for the, all the awesome stuff about Malkor. Mm -hmm. See, these are the blood fields and the blood hill camps. I mean, the idea of this is like a killing zone in war. I mean, it makes sense. So let's see. Doesn't the Skalk spawn like... I don't know. It's around here, isn't it? I guess he's not up at the moment. We can raise some of these guys. We got 17, we only need three more revives. Is that the same elements as the original Saving Sky Skull achievements? Just easier. See, that's what I was wondering earlier. I think it'd be awesome if it was the same. You know, may maybe the mechanics are different, but the theme. That guy stole our body. Outrageous. There's another one over here. That's exactly the kind of thing Guild Wars was never meant to happen in. <laughs> Is it really 200 mobs? We've only done 73. It's quite a lot of killing. Let's go back up to the warg pit. This makes me think of the, the uh, centaurs and their very minimal involvement in the story. Ever, really. I mean, Jesus, what do we have? We had a bit in dry top. And then we're kind of done, right? And you might think, well, so what? But it's funny because the, ba the, ce the centaurs are kind of like the enemy faction for the humans, you know? You got the bandit stuff and the white mantle stuff, and they drew on all of that already, obviously. But, you know, you got the centaurs for the humans. Yeah, the inquest with the Asura. Um, and when you look at a faction like the inquest, there's just a billion of them. You know, they're everywhere. There's loads of that stuff. They've appeared in so many patches. But what really substantial have we done with the centaurs? Lake Doric had a bit. I can see why the idea with the Ice Brood Saga might be to have some Centaur stuff. Candidate for a mini X-Pack now? The, I, I'll say it again, right? The mini X-Packs are really sick. so good for my, like, enthusiasm and interest in this franchise. Because it really, did, for the first time in so long, it honestly feels like anything could happen again. Like, like next year we could be doing a big centaur story, and I know that might not that might sound kind of lame or whatever, but you know what, I could pick I could pick anything in the game, anything, and it's like well the next mini X pack might be about that. They might actually be able to pick these things up. With the old expansion format, there were certain topics. It was like, can you do a whole expansion about it? Can you shoehorn this into another story? Not really. But this kind of like much more modular, regular style kind of opens a lot of doors. I think. No, the centaurs would not be at the top of my list. They wouldn't be even the top half of my list. But I can see a world where they have something to say and something to do. You guess uh, Joko stuff vaguely had to do with centaurs? Oh, maybe, yeah. The old centaur bones at the Bone Palace. Your victory maybe. Will be I guess the only thing that the mini... Speaking of Joko, the only thing the mini X-Packs can't really do is they can't go back to stuff that was a bit wobbly before, you know, like like Joko and the Awakened. I mean, it could go back to the Awakened, actually, just not Joko. I mean, it could even go back to Joko now that he's alive again. He's clearly alive again, guys. I'm, that's a fact, all right? I'm just going to be stating that as a fact in my videos going forwards. Secrets of the Obscure brought Joko back to life. And a new Joko arc is definitely possible. Everyone satisfied with that? Got some proper OG pre searing music here. I promise a painful end. A water themed Vargos expansion make you realistically happy? Yeah, you know, it was kind of a blessing, really, in disguise that End of Dragons didn't do very much with water. 
you know, Suwon was the water dragon, but we didn't really explore any of the underwater territories. We didn't look at the underwater factions in a big way. We didn't really do underwater. And they very, they brilliantly, uh, just absolutely excellently, they kept the idea of the deep sea dragon kraken monster alive. You know, they kept that as a part of the game. And so we can go back to it. I mean, it's, it's really good. Oh, okay, it was 100 enemies. All right, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, we can go do the Mega Destroy now with those two done. It's a world boss. And a pretty quick one at that. I think we're within our 15-minute window, aren't we? Okay, I'm actually going to mute here so I can get do a big blow of my nose, really. I'm going to blow my trumpet. Be up, be up, be one second. My god, that was gross. <laughs> this is totally TMI, but I'm just going to say, some of that did not hit the tissue paper. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, uh, it looks like the Mega Destroyer is done. Just rip. How did I mess that up then? Okay, uh, Fire Elemental is up now. Fire Elemental, again, notoriously has a really long wind up, but that might somewhat benefit us. Since, uh, you know, we're, we're a little bit late, so. If New Arena Net Hires watch my videos, they might believe it. <laughs> I think if they do, they're probably watching um, just, you know, the, the RT Law series. It's kind of like an intro to the franchise kind of thing. Again, because I don't really do any, I haven't done any, like, easily digestible, like, spotlight videos on specific elements of the law. For a very long time. Magic battery cell, nearing capacity. More. I'm sure you can handle it. Let's mute the dialogue here. Since it's an escort, so my alarm bell is ringing. Fire Ellie's the weekly as well. Oh, really? Oh, I, I have a PvP weekly. Uh, hold on, You're, that would be a personal weekly for you anyway, wouldn't it? Yeah, so as good as PvP is for the um, all these objectives, now that I'm not really playing PvP, now that I'm not really into it, and I'm playing other games and doing other things, all of a sudden I kind of regret that that's my preference. In fact, no, I don't super regret it. If I ever wanted to log in and do it, I would just play a ranked game or two. You think the old videos that tackle topics that didn't come up much more in Guild Wars 2 are still relevant? I think the ones that just tell the story of Guild Wars 1 are relevant and work. But, you know, the other one, the, the, the more that ArenaNet to provide payoffs to old mysteries and stuff, a lot of those mystery episodes will stop being relevant. Like, um, the one on the Wizard's Tower, as great as that is, it's kind of lost a lot of value now, hasn't it? Um, because of this awesome new expansion that's expanded on that. We kind of have answers. I mean, I do get a lot of comments on that lately of people saying, oh, it's really cool to come back to this. So, you know, there's kind of a novelty to it. But as far as an actual resource, that's, that's lost some interest. PvP only daily is the best. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It, it is by far. And for the weekly as well. Like I said, I, I had the weekly done in like half an hour on one of those weeks just because I was in the middle of an automated tournament when it dinged. And then once the tournament was over, the whole thing was done. To be fair, a lot of things in Guild Wars 2 brought up a missing payoff, says Striker. Yeah, but the thing is, that's good though. I mean, I said I made this argument before, I'll make it again. Obviously, there's a balance to be struck here, but the game thrives on that. You know, the game thrives on having some mysteries and things to wonder about. You know, it's not a criticism to say, oh, there's all these compelling things this game could do, but it hasn't done them. You know, it's not actually much of a criticism. It becomes a criticism when there's minimal content and when the content people get is low quality and it leaves people feeling disgruntled and people will end up misdiagnosing the issue. You know, they'll think to themselves, this expansion sucked because of its subject material. This expansion sucked because I wasn't at the Wizard's Tower. This this expansion sucked because it didn't deal with the Elder Dragons. This expansion sucked because it did deal with the Elder Dragons or whatever. But those are all misdiagnoses. The expansion rides or dies based on the quality of its writing. 
how engaging the characters are, how much there is, how great the big action set pieces are. The production quality of the story itself. The story can actually be of almost anything. As far as like world building, setting construction is concerned, you want there to be a bunch of mysteries and dangling threads. There is an, and when I say there's a balance, you know, there is an obligation to pay some things off. Because you want your users to feel like, hey, they might actually do something. If you go years and years and years and nothing gets touched, people are going to think, well, what the fuck's going on, right? So something has to get touched, but only a tiny proportion. You know, the vast majority of things in all reality can sit there being ignored for years and years and years until finally you feel the whim that you want to do it. But something has to be getting satisfied. Something on the list has to be. You know, they could do a whole expansion just on the Scepter of Awe, and that's enough to, you know, reset the timer for all the other interesting ideas, you know. People just need to feel like it will happen, or can happen. And the way you do that is by picking at least some of them. That's how I feel about it, anyway. The real heir to the crying throne is still a question. Belinda and Marjorie, what was the point there? I don't know about that one. Uh, that was a very buried conspiracy kind of thing. Like, they, I, I don't actually feel much obligation for them to do that. Um, because it is rather obscure. They could, and then they would just have to do a nice, like, recap and explanation and, like, expand the story in a good way in the opening act, and then everyone's on the same page. But I don't, I don't think that's very high on the list. <laughs> Something's got to get touched, WP. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Lovely quote there, Robin Hood. Your fire elemental has like 50 commander tags for the uh, weekly. Actually, good point. I mean, look at this, guys. That's that's pretty funny. We have a lot of tags as well. Since when did this start happening in Guild Wars? People tagging up for funsies? I've always thought that that was a thing, you know, like... Generally speaking in Guild Wars, if you're wandering around with a tag, you get like snotty comments about it. Like, oh, if you're not actually running content, turn it off, please. Thank you. Like, and I think that snottiness is born out of a lot of different things. Uh, partly the early days jealousy and stuff because it costs money and, you know, people just get salty and protective and weird and shit. But I've always thought, you know, if there's enough, it becomes stupid, so everybody does it, you know. And it's just a question of where's that threshold. And I've never seen that threshold really be reached, but here it is. And someone in chat just said it happened in their instance as well. Hold on, are you in this instance? Look at how good this is. This is awesome. Angel McCoy said she was the architect behind the hidden air plot and locked pl locket plot, but believed it wouldn't be continued after she left the arena. Yeah, that's a really interesting era of the storytelling, uh, the season one and two stuff, because they kind of had new new people in and new minds and new ideas, new ambitions. It's where a lot of stuff came from that felt very disconnected from Guild Wars One. You know, um, it's a, in large part where our the genesis of our Destiny's Edge 2.0 of Scarlet and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, that doesn't mean it all has to be dropped. Personally, I don't think that. I think, I think Sutu has done so good at reassuring me that the devs remember the big lore, most of the lore, even a lot of small lore. There's actually been a lot of really great moments in Secrets of the Obscure where the devs have pointed something out in the lore or, like, fixed a plot hole or something that I hadn't even considered yet or I hadn't even thought about. And that shit is just the greatest feeling for a lore enthusiast. It's just the best feeling. And they've done that constantly. So, you know, I, I really do think the world's their oyster. You're at Fire Ellie on NA and it's full of tags. Yeah, I think I... Am I NA right now? I'm EU. Oh, by the way, one of the things I kind of want to do here, guys... I will try this once more here. I want to do the strike missions. I want to show those off, they're post-game. No, now, so let, let me say this very loud and very clear. If you guys are on EU right now, and you would like to see the strike missions on the streams, and you'd like to do it with me, join me now, and once we've done this Sky Scale Egg thing, which will be moments away, we will do it. Uh, but what I need is 10 people. Not, not, you know, there aren't even CMs or anything. Nothing crazy, they're quite easy. 
I just need 10 people, and I would rather do it with you guys than do it on LFG. So if you want to do it, just just log in on EU. You can be on any server on EU. And in your chat box here on screen, I will put it up there for you, okay? Look at my chat box right now. Just type that, slash join list. You see that? It's like seven characters. Well, nine with the space and the slash. Just type slash join list. Oh, sorry, sorry. Type slash SQ join list. Sorry. <laughs> That, SQ join list. And uh, and if we get 10 people, then we can do it. Yeah, see, people are joining my squad here. You see? And, uh, alright, we actually need to tag the fire lead. My god. So, obviously, this was updated a little. I think I've done a video with the new update of this for you guys. Missed my fire too there. At that channel, I've got to move out of the fire here. Go for a combo. Do I have a vase of arcana? No, I don't. Wait in our water field for arcane brilliance. It disappeared. It didn't work. Wow, I'm getting major lag here. Oh my god. Whoa. I mean, like latency. Not, not. Fr I mean, the frames are kind of low as well. But, you know, that's to be expected with the fire elemental. No, they CC'd me. There we go. That's okay. Alright, nice. Defeating world bosses. So that's our third world boss. I don't know where we got our other two from. Okay, next, we want the Egg of Growth. So we interact with the Garden Patch near the Garden Root Tunnel in the Grove. This is that cool, fun, like, hidden tunnel area. Sorry, I mean nine people. Yeah, that's true. I need nine. Nine people. Strikes are a lot of fun, but not very tough. Great for another a first stream. Yeah, I think. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I think. I'm not going to comment on that right now. Uh, the balance of strikes, CM versus non-CM. These ones feel like Ice Breed Saga strikes. I think. Uh, all right, let's comment. Why not? I think in terms of like balance. The End of Dragons ones were a lot better for, like, normal mode. They were more interesting, more layered. These ones feel like just big squishy hitboxes again, you know? Uh, well, Dagda does. I think Ceres feels a little bit better. But we'll see. There you go. We feel pretty quick here. Yeah, uh, also, at that, if somebody wants to take leadership role and, like, set up the roles and stuff, um, then that's also cool. If not, I'll just bumble my way through it in a minute. Interesting. I thought there'd be an interactable in here. I think we've gone to the wrong wrong place. Interact with a garden patch near Garden Root Tunnel in the grave. Okay, this is not Garden Root Tunnel. Garden Root Tunnel is like over here, isn't it? That's Back Root Tunnel. Garden Root Tunnel. I remember years ago being really excited about the idea that they would expand to this place here. In the Privet Gardens, and the Sea Watcher's Ledge. I mean, look at this. There's a lot of the Grove that you don't actually ever go to. All that. It's not there, but it was also the first place you tried, says Arbardi. Okay, interesting. Arbardi, I've always wanted to ask you a question, okay? You know you've always had the South Park character as your avatar icon. My question to you is, did you make that for the Stick of Truth? Or the fractured but it would definitely not. Because I think you've had that icon way before those games came out. So where did you get that from? But I'm assuming it's from the games, the South Park games. You're curious to see where strikes go without Cameron Rich. You felt like he had a lot of impact on the uh, that gave the concept new updraft. I, I think I need to oh the other thing I really want to do in this series is play the new fractal. You know, it's funny, I spent a good hour before t uh, going live today thinking to myself, what do I want to actually do? You know, like eyeballing these? And I didn't even think about the fractal, but I do need to do the fractal. <laughs> why that didn't cross my mind, I don't know why. Yeah, it's way before. So where'd you get that from? Is that actually from the TV show then? Or is that fan art? Yeah, I thought it was way before. Because I know you've been around way before, but I don't know if you always had that icon. That's the, the thing. <coughs> Used a very old site to make a custom character. And it looked a lot like you IRL. You remember that site, says Joe. Wow, really? People remember this?
it's nice that we can still talk about this in a way, and it's like South Park isn't a thing of the past, you know? It's still very, very much produced and talked about and understood. And Frost Zombie used that site as well. What is this? I've never heard of that. Make your own South Park avatar. I bet there was shit like that for like Harry Potter as well. Oh, what house do you belong to, guys? Take the quiz. Are you a Gryffindor? I bet you are. Do you have a dragon core wand? Some other generic stuff people would love to hear about themselves. Oh my god, you made it before YouTube existed. I will always have... It's, my life's very weird, right? Like, it's kind of surreal to think that I've been doing YouTube f for a good portion of my life now and all that, you know? It, like, I don't really think of myself in those terms in any... Not really, you know? But, I mean, it's true, and YouTube has been a big part of my life, and it, it's weird to think about. But I, I always get hung up on this weird memory I have of when I was at school, the first time someone ever mentioned YouTube to me. Here we are, this is where it goes. And it was a guy I didn't even know that well, really. But, you know, he was in a class with me. And, um... And I, I just, I always remember him mentioning the website just out of nowhere. And, and it's like one of those things where it's like, little did I know that it was going to end up being a big part of my life, you know? I don't know, that's probably not much of an anecdote, is it? There we go, place the egg. Right, next world boss is the Shatterer. Whoa! Oh, I can't be bothered to change my character that's set up, though. The Shatterer I do want to do, though. Believe it or not, I have an achievement left to get at the Shatterer. Uh, but it's probably going to be a long wind-up to the start, so I'll try and squeeze in one more infusion before that. Which would be... Oh, oh, okay, no, we don't have to clear the temple. We just have to interact with the casket at the statue. Near the Temple of Grenth. Okay, that's good. Grenth is like my favourite stat uh, statue as well. Uh, temple. This was where I farmed. This was how I got a legendary, guys, at launch. I used to play with a thief player whose name I don't even remember anymore. But I used to play with it. He used to use short bow autos and cluster bomb to cleave. And what we would do, there's a bunch of like mini ice elementals that spawn in this event. And we would kill them because they would have a high chance to drop glacial lodestones. And what I did was I traded those glacial lodestones for a ghastly grinning shield, which was one of the first big Halloween exclusive drops. And about five months after Halloween was over, I sold the ghastly grinning shield for an insane profit and spent that on my incinerator. A couple of months after Christmas, maybe, or just after Christmas, something like that. But that was what I did. I farmed this, bought an item, and then flipped the item. And that's how I got the incinerator. Uh, I was in the middle of another anecdote, and I forgot it. You did that avatar when you were 20, 21, now you're 39. It's amazing how quick time flies. That's nice, though. That's become a... Is that your avatar, like, everywhere? Like, if I were to find your Reddit account, would it also be the same thing? Okay, this casket has absorbed immense amounts of roiling death energy. That's good. So then the Cauldron of Searing and Iron Marches is also incredibly easy. These are all real quick here. Are all maps still populated nowadays? I believe the new expansion has somewhat reinvigorated them because there is... There's a collection called, like, Forgotten Lore, and I'm very interested in it, in doing it. But it's like, um... Go find a bunch of stuff in ore and do temples in ore. And then there is, uh... There's just, like, rifts appear in ore and stuff as well, so... Which we did on the previous part. If you want lore, Knowledge of Elders is a good achievement to do. Okay, that sounds good as well. place the egg in this. Over two centuries ago, this massive cauldron was used by the char to ignite the searing, a destructive wave that decimated their human foe. Though cold and silent, the relic's power still abides. So we've got the egg. Get attacked by angry chickens in Ebonhawk. That, that's amazing. Hold on, hold on. What's the... I said Ebonhawk. Really weird there, didn't I? That's fear. <laughs> they could have picked a lot of stuff for fear. That's kind of cute that they went with this. This is like a Legend of Zelda uh, reference, I believe. 
You need to like... Oh look, they're here. Oh no, they just despawned. Is it just killing chickens or is it something more specific than that? I think it might just be killing chickens. Well that one's invulnerable. There you go, there's an angry chicken here. There you go, they're mad at me now. It's very good, isn't it? I wonder with enough power creep if you can actually break through, because look. Oh my god, you can! Go, power creep, go! Oh, I think I need more condies. No, we're getting there just about. Don't guess out. Kill the chicken! It's so low! There we go. Oh, no, did it despawn? That one didn't despawn. Three, two, one. Yeah. I'm very satisfied with that. All right, let's go kill the Shatterer. The Shatterer is so ruined by power creep at the moment, it's unreal. I have seen the Shatterer instant die. Quite often, it dies very quickly. But I have seen it instant die. Like, it doesn't even really get an animate. Like, the, the achievement I... Well, this was the other anecdote. I need an achievement. I need to get the break bar achievement. And we could swap to another character, like the new Virtuoso thing, where you ambush on dagger and you just spam break bar damage. It's completely insane. We could do that, but I'll, I'll do it here because I would trust that they'll break the break bar anyway, I suppose. But, um... Yeah, it's crazy. This thing needs a patch, man. Like, I don't know. I know that they've had the balance patch where they rain power creep in a bit, but my god. Uh, some of this stuff is just so unfit for purpose now. And the thing is, as well, it makes me really sad to think, you know, they reworked the Shatterer once upon a time. You know, when I think of greatest failures in terms of patches, I think that's up there for me. If you guys don't know, right, when the game launched, the three big dragons, right? Tequato, Claw of Jormag, Shara. Sorry, Tequato down here. <coughs> they weren't really that good. So what they did on the one year anniversary is they remade tech and it was an amazing update. Really fucking cool. Kind of ruined by power creep these days, but you know, it's not too bad, right? Years and years and years later, they looked at the Shatterer and the Shatterer had a similar thing. The Shatterer specifically had a thing where everyone just stands on this one rock and they just stack there, and then you just hit his one foot, and then he dies. And so ArenaNet came in a few years ago, and they said, Alright, look, there's gliding now, we can do things. We are going to do a patch that stops this stacking thing. Like, the remit of the patch is to stop people stacking. That's the main thing, okay? And we'll, we'll upgrade the, the fight. And so anyway, I was really excited, and I did a whole video about how they could, you know, bring it to the Steel Eye Span, and do all kinds of cool shit, you know. This was before I got so burned that I wasn't excited about doing videos like that anymore, right? Like, so I did my big long blah 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 blah, and in the end it was just a, a, it was an okay update, alright? It was okay, but the whole point really was to get people to stop standing on that rock. Um, and hopefully make the fight better. And now, with all the power creep, I mean, they may as well have never done the patch. Because, this guy's just gonna die, like, super fast anyway. Like, it's like, really, they owe it to that previous patch, and they owe it to initiatives of the past to take a look at shit like this, because this is just crazy. What? I, and I might be proven wrong here, but this might be a really slow group you're about to see, and it's, you know, shut me up. But, honestly, he dies way too fast, and it makes that patch seem like such a waste of time. And when I say, oh, it's like a low-light patch, the thing is, people still stack on this island anyway. The whole remit of the patch was to get people to stop stacking there. You can do it anyway. I mean, here, it, it's kind of a, a... Most of the time, people will stand here, don't get me wrong, right? Like, and they'll glide in. But if you want to tag up and stand here, and I've done this multiple times before, people will get downed, and then they'll res, and then that's it. And what you're going to... And we'll stand on the hill. And what you'll also find... You see how everyone's running over to the hill as soon as my tag's there for a second? The other thing is, like, people might stand here... Like, here we go, we're starting. Is there an EMP? Because I do want the achievement if it comes up. Here's what we do. We glide... And now we go and stand on the hill. And that's it. Really. Uh, so, you know, it's like it's like a real low-light patch, because it didn't even do the one thing it meant to do. Here we go, we get broken out. So he's not melting that fast on this one, which is nice to see. Actually managed to go down as well. 
I mean, they should just get rid of rallying on the mobs. Now, I hope that people break this break, but I do not have a build for it. Oh, we do have a, a, a United Legions thing here. There, there it's there. Yeah, I've very often seen him die before this break bar even appears. Did we get it? Wow, we didn't even get the break bar. Yeah, this is a much lower rate map. So, there you go. He goes up. My god, the turret sounds are so loud. But he's going to have a crystal hibernation phase in a second here as well. And quite often, he doesn't even get to that. He doesn't even get to the crystal hibernation. And I feel especially bad about the Shatterer for all this stuff, because the Shatterer is like the OG world boss. He's from the, uh, the Gamescom demos, you know? The fucking Gamescom demos. Like, this is where it started for Guild Wars 2, in a lot of ways. Like, he deserves to shine, you know? Um, yes, the Shadow Bemoth was there as well, but when you actually saw, like, the press tours that the devs gave, they always took people to the Shatterer. They wouldn't all, you wouldn't always see the, the Shadow Bemoth but you would always see the Shara. They always swapped to a char that was higher level, and you always saw that. So there you go, so that's one healing phase. Will he get a second, is the question. We might actually get a shot at a second break bar as well. But if they never made it through the first one, I don't see how they'll make it through the second. I quite like killing this, by the way, even outside of the Skyscale Egg, because it might give me the uh, decoration for the Spud Guildhall. And I really want to get a full trophy room for Spud at the moment. Um, I am still taking invites to Spud, by the way. I've been a bit less active the past week or so and feeling very bad about it. But, uh, you know, I am still taking uh, invites and I want to look back at the guild hall at some point. I actually asked the GMs the other day if I could swap. Because I feel like I've got enough out of the Campton Hall for now, you know? If there's another break, but I think it's coming soon-ish. I'm scared to leave uh, uh, air. But we'll see. Just to be clear, guys, in chat, can you just confirm for me, is this too loud for you right now? Because it's fucking loud in my ears. There you go. We didn't see another break bar or another crystal phase. It's just over. So there you go. There's the Shatterer. Right. Uh, that's it, then. We're done. There you go. We've done our full world bosses. So we get a receipt for the infused Skyscale egg. Okay, I'm just gonna say, if this is it now, and I have a Skyscale just from this, my friend's an idiot, and it's definitely a much easier way of getting a Skyscale. There's no excuse to not get that. There is no excuse. However, if there's like another phase now where I have to start spending money and things, we'll see. You need to find a guild? Well, yeah, you're welcome to. You can just join on. And talking about the Steam stuff earlier, by the way, we have a Steam group, too, um, uh, that you guys can join. And, uh, you know, that person who asked that question about, like, achievements and stuff. All right, here we go. I have the infused egg. Oh, sorry, sorry. Dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. Oh, precious syllables. Ourselves to make sure they thrive. And this little one should be more than prepared. Okay. So we do have more. So now we want to do growing comforts and saddle materials. And with those two, we will be done. Sky scale growing comforts, saddle materials. Okay, so the saddle materials buy from a faction provisioner at Amnitas. Amnitas. Okay, it's just faction provisioners. Oh, it's all faction provisioners. Okay, that's incredibly easy. And then... What was the other one? Comforts. Bring 12 pieces of Skyscale food to Diane. Okay, defeat a Cryptus to obtain a treat. Defeat a Jotun. Defeat Devourers. Chuck. Treants. That's a weird phrase. Worms. Oozes. Forged. Bird whistle. But oh, sorry, purchase a bird whistle. In the glade. In the Iron Marches. 
Purchase a Quaggan plush in the Wizard's Tower. Purchase heavy duty Doliac blanket from Herda Liot near the Boulder Mouth of Ale in Lorna's Pass. These seem very simple, guys. And that's it then after that, right? I mean, it really is just walk around a bit. Okay, uh, but before we do that, let's go to the, uh, do the strike now, because we've got a bunch of people in the squad who have been patiently waiting, and I don't think it's fair to make them wait any longer. So here's the question. Are we, like, a real comp or what? I don't know. But what I'm going to do to everyone who wants to play this and do this strike, uh, I'm going to load in, and then we'll just figure out what we've got. If, if you guys want to explain anything to me or details or whatever, do it in squad chat and I will see and we will go. So yeah, for everyone else who's never seen this content, um, what we do once you've beaten the game is you come to the strike portal. And uh, she says, do you resonate with a stone traveler? Images of your past, memories, they all float through your thought thoughts. Some of them may be warm, some of them are bitter. Do you dare relive these moments? See, so we don't really have a scrying pool anymore, but you know. So where can I go? You may be able to relive past events, but be careful. The mind is a peculiar thing. You never know what changes may occur. Bring a squad for safety. Fierce challenges await you and your companions. So uh, I'd like to join a strike mission for Secrets of the Obscure. And we've got two. You've got the Temple of Febe and you've got the Cosmic Observatory. So of course Dagda we fought at the Cosmic Observatory and Ceres we fought at the end of the story in the Temple of Febe. So let's do the Cosmic Observatory first. Let's load on in. And what happens, guys, is it alternates daily, I believe. So Keep them away. today it will be like kill Dagda and then, sorry, weekly. Is it weekly? It'll be like kill Dagda and then kill Ceres and then kill, and it either alternates daily or weekly. I can't remember. Let's have a look. Daily strike mission. Yeah, so it's Ceres today. It's the daily today. Yeah. So you get a daily from the Icebrood Saga, a daily from the End of Dragons, and now a daily from Secrets of the Obscure. And I like this setup. I really do. I think the whole, the culture around strikes at the moment and how people form for them and group up and stuff is working very well. So it looks like somebody just left, by the way. So anyone in chat who wants to do this with us, you're more than welcome to join. They're not hard at all. I'm not going to be playing a meta build. I'm on Celestial. I'm going to be doing crap. You can do just as crap as me. It's fine. Uh, we just need a tenth. So if somebody wants to join, just type slash squad join list and jo come on in so we can get. So what I'll do, guys, is I'll say this. Look, if you're quickness, can you go sub two? And I guess I am quickness, to be honest, on this build. And if you're quick and if you're alacrity, go sub three. So let me just see what we've got there. If people move themselves in the squad... Anyone can join, and people can move themselves. So let me see. Wait. Quickness Vindicator. Sorry, I don't understand. Quickness Vindicator? Sub 2 is for quickness. And sub 3 is for alacrity. Okay, see, so we don't need... Oh, there we go. Okay, he's playing Herald. Okay, so I don't need to go quickness, so I can just... I mean, it's not its not going to be great, but I can swap. So do we have two healers as well? We have a druid, and we have a firebrand. Okay, that's good. Oh, and we have a... Uh, so can one of these alacrity guys swap? Just any one of you? Mm. If you can swap and then move Keep to another sub, that would be really useful, please. Just need one alacrity to go away. Preferably one of the healers, because then... We don't have too many healers. And uh, I guess I can change my traits somewhat. In fact, do I actually have... Pure Berserker Concentration. Oh my god. Do you know what? A long time ago, I muted player, player instrument volume. And just last week, I was like, maybe I can turn that back on. Maybe that'll be fun. But instantly, no. <laughs> uh, hold on, I have a build. I'm sure I do. Pure Viper. Pure Berserker with Concentration. That's not right, though. I don't really want that. Oh, but it's not got Concentration. Maybe it's just got a Concentration sig Sigil. Uh, we can try this. Okay, perfect. All right, we got two. Uh, we got three healers. We got an extra healer, but who cares, right? <laughs> Whatever. So let me just filter people me. through. All right, so we should be good here. All right, I'll throw up a ready check. So we fight Dagda, and she has some slightly new mechanics now, just to be clear. Yeah, and there's a ready check. 
Uh, do I have food? What kind of food might Liz have? Jesus, <laughs> inventory's a bit of a bomb, isn't it? This bomb is purely from this series, by the way. This is what this series has done. Oh my god. Oh, we're going in already. All right, here we go. Since everybody's really checked up. Yeah, I have really no practice on, like, doing a proper DPS or kind of catalyst or anything, so... I'm not even 100% sure my traits are set up properly here. Like, there I used my energy too quickly, so now I don't have an orb for my water thing. We'll just find a, a moment where we can reset here. We just want to auto attack a couple of times. Okay, that's not too bad. Do I stay for my fire augment? Probably. Probably a good idea. There we go. Now we have the energy. Now the water one can come up. Perfect. Now, as for her mechanics, like, I just died there. I'm not actually sure why, because I'm staring at my skill bar. She does do some slightly different stuff. Oh, see, I don't have my fire field again. This is basically the worst build to just jump in and just play, but let's we'll see. Okay, I heard a ding, but then it went away. Oh, she moved. I think she TPs back, doesn't she? No? Am I thinking about the ice breed? No, there we go. Okay, that's a personal thing. Oh my god, I never have any energy. I'm pressing it way too quick. I think we can reset it here. I've got to move out there. I don't know if that's max malleable. I've got to move out there. I think that's fine from that position. The thing is, when I'm in Earth, I need to save up enough energy. Oh my god, I'm still too low. Ugh, so annoying. Oh yeah, okay, she has a new thing here. You see that green arrow? That's like everybody stack on the arrow together. Which is kind of a new thing for Guild Wars. Uh, totally new type of telegraph. Okay, I have a personal AoE again. Everyone else is moving much further out than me, that's good. So here, we want to move out of the middle, but stay on the green arrow. And the less people that are on the green arrow, the more damage we'll take. Because we're trying to spread the damage between all of us. So I just stay a few seconds here to get some energy from Earth, and then, uh, it's still too soon. Whatever. Too soon as well. She's dropping more orbs. The orbs, I don't know what they do. I don't know what that mechanic is. There we go. We've actually charged a fuck ton now, so hopefully that's enough. Dropping more orbs. I mean, I can collect one. Oh, it gives me a special action of some kind. The other thing, really, I want to be lining up. <coughs> oh god, I'm doing this so badly. Uh, is I want to do my like. Uh, grand finale in fire really I don't want to have it desynced into one of these other achievements which is what I do so that sucks she moves straight out of my air too wow I broke combat that's very weird why did I break combat oh and I'm dead that was the first time I got my air and water combo together nope I don't know what burst me maybe I should go get an orb let's see taken she has an ability called Nightfall. A growing column of shadows that damages and pulses. An ally of mine hit me for Whirling Axe. Oh, I see. No, it was a nightmare version of an ally of mine. Wow, I got grave diggered by the Knight with Blight for uh, 12k damage. That was basically what killed me there, the 12k grave digger.
Wait, I didn't swap each lack and quickness from the parties? What do you mean? We had... Oh, did we have two of each? Yeah, we're doing very... This is... Uh, the, um... Uh, the secrets of the Ubisoft ones are very, like, health spongy. Like, very, very, very tanky. But even for that, I think we're going quite slow here. We're not even below half. Someone got mind controlled by the puddle. When an orb spawns, a very de deadly enemy thing spawns. The orbs are used to kill it. You want to block the person being targeted by the arrow. So the idea is to get between them and the boss. Ah, I didn't understand that either. I thought it was just everybody stand on the arrow. But no, what we're doing is we're trying to obstruct it. So it like goes through multiple targets and dissipates. If you stand in the black uh, and red puddle, you become an enemy and attackable by others. That's what you died to. I see. This is crazy. The only times I've done this, like, and I did this on, like, launch, uh, I'm going to say launch week. I think it was, like, day two or three. Any time I've ever done it, we've just, like, one shot it straight away. And, like, I basically had the impression there were no mechanics going on here. So this is quite good, actually, to see some more stuff. It sucks to just sit here defeated forever, but, you know. And there's no enrage here. This is going to take forever. You have two quickness in group two and two alack in group three. Are you sure? Because this you might, you might be looking at that. Who's who's this guy? Oh, he could be alack. He's renegade. So we could have druid and renegade. I see. So oh, I fucked up filtering them out. Okay, that that make that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I put they're supposed to be split, but I put them all together. Yeah, you're right, because I got the Herald and the uh, Firebrand together up there. Yeah, that's my bad. I'm sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Let's see what else we can see she's doing from downstate here. The orb mechanic is a little touchy. The special action thing isn't like ground targeted it. It just looked like, well, the icon at least, looked exactly like the um, Icebreed Saga special actions. I kind of really hate the special actions in the Ice Brood Saga Strikes. They're kind of annoying and fiddly at the door to, like, have to collect all of them, which is, uh, like, aggravating. And then, you know, they're such easy fights anyway. It just feels like unnecessary power creep or something to spam them. Like, and it ruins buildcraft as well in terms of, like, oh, everyone can just break every break bar. Speaking of which, that was a break bar there. I don't know what happens if you don't get it. CM coming in a month. Yeah, with the new patch, we get the first CM, which I assume would be Dagda. So remember, what it is, guys, is it's the first patch will have a CM. The second patch will have a CM. So it'll be Dagda Serus. And then the third patch has a Fractal with a CM already baked into it. I believe that's confirmed, anyway, that there's a, there's a, there's a CM with the Fractal. So every patch, there should be something for the end game to enjoy. Uh, I will say though, I think if it's like my trin kind of CM, um, it's not going to be that great for the scene, for people to wait, you know. Three months in and then three months out. And what they get during that time is, is, is my trin. Uh, there is of course gonna, probably going to be like a bonus achievement with the CM that you can do. Um... But that will be like one time ever, so I, I wouldn't assume that that would keep people playing for a long time. They'd probably do it and then just move on. Oh, this is the worst possible result, to be honest, that we get defeated and then we have like just a really, 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 really slow grind down of the fight. <laughs> To you, the ideal difficulty for strikes is old lion's core, normal and CM both. Yeah, that's a pretty good balance, I think, as well. I really like Minister Lee, I just think it's slightly too long. I really like HDCM, but that's kind of a special case. I wonder whether they'll do like a special case type thing for this expansion. I would hope so. I'd hope the last last so it's just gonna be a Dagda and a Ceres CM, right? Like So I don't know. Do you guys think Ceres will be like HDCM? I I doubt it. It doesn't really give them much space for, like... 
Like, if you call, like, HTCM, like, the super hard... What do we get for just, like, hard content? One fight, Dagda? At a ten-man scale. It does make you sad that the big bad of the expansion doesn't get his own strike. Yeah, you mean, like, in the end of the third story step, that's not going to be a strike mission? Yeah, I suppose. I can't believe I fucked up this boon stuff. I wonder how much faster we'd be going if I hadn't done that. This fight needs a lot of additions to be interesting on CM. Yeah, that was my impression of it as well. That really, there's very little happening. You're hoping for a new strike in Naos? Yeah, I mean, I would like that too, but it's not on the, the roadmap, so I don't think it's going to come. You have a small hope that Ceres is CM's second phase of their park. In a weird way, it would have made more sense to have the Fractal in the middle patch. So that the final boss of the so that the final patch of the expansion can be a big boss thing about the expansion. Yeah, exactly. Two strikes per expansion is very limiting for the devs. Probably can't afford to take many risks in difficulty. Right, yeah. Maybe we resolve the epoch situation peacefully. Yeah, I mean that. <laughs> I don't know, that's kind of a whole other conversation. Can you do a story patch that doesn't have any big fight at all? Do you have to have fights for the MMO? I mean, the answer is basically yes. Maybe it's not a conversation at all. <sighs> Just 10% to go. I mean, I can't complain. I died, and while I was up, I was horrendously mishandling my energy. Such that half my utility skills weren't getting pressed or weren't getting their added effects. This is a really stupid build to just jump in and play. I was kind of hoping I would just run my Celestial build and just spam quickness and that's it. But um, then we had a, a huge abundance of boon givers, so what are you going to do? A way to give the big bad it's due in part three would be to make a meta event. Yes, they could do it that way. They could do it like Dragonstorm style. You know, that's not a strike. I said with End of Dragons that I kind of don't like the big meta event maps like Dragon's End anymore. I, I, I think it kind of ruins Dragon's End that it's also a ma meta map. I, I really do. I think we lost out a lot there. But Dragonstorm... You know, Dragonstorm sucked as a patch because of the Primordial stuff. But in terms of actual... All right, let's. Let, uh, hopefully, you guys don't mind. Let's do that again, but where I'm alive, and we have quickness properly set up. So, can you guys? Can you guys do me a favor? Can you go back? If your quickness or if your quickness, can you go sub three? And if you're alacrity, can you go sub four, please? Just drag your own icon if you are one of those. I believe the situation is something like that. If you're DPS, can you go to sub two? If you're alacrity, can you go to sub four? If you're quickness, can you go to sub three? please. And I think there'll be a little bit of delay before people can respond and actually do it. But it looks like we've got, I mean, wasn't that mech a DPS mech? Not a quickness mech? So let's just see, because our boons were just unbelievable there. Like, that was a really messed up comp. Somebody's left as well here. Is Ellie my favourite class? You said Mesmer used to be my favourite in Guild Wars 1. Um, no, not really. I don't think it's my favourite class. I don't really think I have a favourite class, to be honest with you. This game's, like, all the classes are so accessible and so easy to, like, get alts and stuff. I don't really feel any particular kinship to one or the other. I think Mesmer's really cool because it's, like, very unique on, like, a, a broader level. Okay, so what's going on with this guy that left? Is he coming back? If he's not coming back... Or has he switched? Maybe he's returned in a second. So look, what we want is the quickness down here and the alacrity up here. There you go. All right, so now it's fixed. And I'm going to assume that that guy is DPS. Okay, so let's do it this way. All right, and we're ready. And if he comes back, that would be very nice so we can play it. 
And what food do I have? I still have fishing power food on. I could put some actual better food on. And let's see if we can avoid the thing that killed us, which apparently was a black puddle that turned us into an enemy. I, I swear to God, I've done this multiple times. I've never seen that mechanic. Never. Look at that, by the way. 33 of those goddamn things. All right, he's back. Good. Okay, let's ready check. Oh, do we have to leave? We, have to, we can't just respawn her, can we? We have to leave. Sorry, yeah, that guy's probably the one guy that was smart here. I think we all have to leave, and then we all have to go back in. So everybody out. What if you've got no idea what you are? Then you're probably just DPS. If you don't know what you're doing, then you're probably just DPS. <laughs> so we need everybody to be out. Wizard Tower, Wizard Tower, Wizard Tower, Wizard Tower, Wizard Tower. Oh my god, you guys were genius there. That was very fast. Okay, good. Right, let's do that once more. I don't mean to this to be too boring or grindy or whatever, but I would like a, an actual fight here. Okay. Get away from me. Um. Yes, and she's very upset. She says, get away. Burning duration. A bit of precision. <laughs> I guess we can do that. Wow, using food consumables as my adventure guide. That's how little I do this shit on this. Alright. And now these guys need to join and it's taking the mages. <laughs> and I guess... There we go. Squad's ready. Let's do this. Alright, as soon as this is done, guys, we'll just run on in. I don't know what achievement I want to start in. I'm really sorry about this sniffling, guys. You don't play Reaper to know what you're doing. Apparently, Reaper's a lot stronger now as well. You can't stand maps that just have a meta take up the whole thing? Yeah, me too. I, I really started to... I, I mean, I've been having the... Holy fuck, what was all that damage? That's crazy. Can I please have some energy? Thing is, we want to go to air now. There we go. Oh my god, did I miss my air... fucking air 2? Let's watch real close what she's doing, shall we? See if we can spot what's happening. See, I'm slow enough at this that every time we go into fire, we should have our glyph there. So that... pink... blob does damage, but isn't necessarily that bad. There was an enemy there called the, the Tormented. Did you guys see that? I did see that. Okay, we get an arrow again. Yeah, and the guy with the target goes to the back. Do you guys see that? He's all the way at the back. Some kind of ding sound. She's moved. I think instead of going to her, I'll just wait. And now I've got personal AoE. Ugh. And then I went to air because it was better for the ranged attack, but kind of screws everything else up. Okay, so we wait. It's on me again. On launch day, what was happening was... Uh, wow, my voice really cracked there, didn't it? <laughs> on launch day, uh, people would just spin around panicking with the arrow thing, like trying to like not get hit by the arrow. Or It was quite funny, but I don't know. Within that one fight, people sort of figured out that it wasn't a, it wasn't a big deal. Oh, God, we're in the thing. Okay. So we get an enemy. I still haven't seen these orbs on the floor. Once again, wasting my air too. I'm always scared it's me that's got the target there, but I don't really see that. I assume that's what the ding noise is actually, right? That would make sense. Oh my god, every time I hurricane of pain, it's right it's synchronized that she she ports away. Every time.
Holy fuck, how eyes hurt. What's this this pink thing on the ground as well? That's not a player animation, so what's that? I'm really scared that I'm just gonna suddenly become an enemy and die. I should have air element over there. That was an orb somebody picked up. Oh, she didn't that time, but I just straight up missed it. <laughs> I have a bug with my mouse where it randomly snaps to another area, and I have no idea why it's doing it, but it happened there. Fire eyes are good enough. I mean, if we actually line up, it's pretty good. It's another orb. Going to the arrow. And all the way out. Oh god. I tried dodging back left there, but it didn't really move me very far. Oh, we gotta kill all of them. I don't even remember this phase. I remember this being on the Ceres fight. Or a thing a lot like this on the Ceres fight. Big guy with the target there. There you go. We're actually lined up here now. to move away. Now I can't... Because she's forced me away, I can't really Earth Auto to get the energy. Okay, she attacked half the arena. I guess that's one of her below 50% things. If you don't stun her, we have no other option. Okay, we got to stun her. I'm not in a rota in an attunement that's good for that at all. Oh my god, everybody got it really well, so that's good. I'm going to wait a second to get that and the fire glyph. There we go. The build's starting to feel more normal now. I think this thing where I go into Earth and I immediately Earth 2 is not actually right. I think I do Earth 2 afterwards is the right thing to do. And that one obviously did nothing, but you know, she wasn't there. The arrow. Ah, oh, I did it too early there. I messed up. I, well, I that's okay. You, She's phased. The long road around. I'll use Air 4 for super speed. It's funny, since they reworked that to give super speed, it really feels like the wind blast should give it to everyone. It feels like an AoE ability, but it's, it's so not. Oh my god, repressing another sneeze. Oh, I think I missed my fire uh, augment. Oh god, I just face tanked that. I feel like I can face tank that and probably... Could. I mean, there's no, like, vulnerability or anything, right? I'm not, like, slowly getting worse. Using the uh, Glyph in Air, I think, technically is better if you're going real quick with the build. Oh, I can actually contribute to this one, which is nice. Never mind, they got it before I could. Oh, this, uh, this ability here is like the flashbang thing, you know? It's just super bright. Ah, oh, damn it. Rip my tornado. 
rip my energy. Got a personal AoE. Oh, moving away. Oh, it's nice to play a game where that snapshotting isn't a thing. Because I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy and they, there's the whole snapshot thing in that game and it's like... There I would have died if that was this was that game because they're shitty server. But in Guild Wars, everything's responsive and beautiful. There you go, that's Dagda, and yeah, so that second time I was fighting her, I mean, it really, there's not much going on with that fight, I mean, really. The thing that killed me on that first run, I still don't understand. I mean, what, I didn't see any black fields this time. I think I just did the same thing again, but, you know. Alright, so now let's see Ceres. So Ceres is the other boss. Ceres has way more going on. Ceres looks like it's going to be really fun when they make a CM for it. Ceres is the daily today as well, so the people playing with me hopefully have a bit of added incentive to get there and do it. He's also rather tanky. I think that's the thing that makes these feel a bit like the Ice Fruit Saga ones, you know. Uh, okay, wow, everyone's out instantly. So good. Oh, I'd like to enter a strike mission. And Temple of Febe. Are we going to be able to see this FF playtime? Just wondering. Yes, you will. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the cusp. I'm, I'm very, very, very on the cusp of a big Final Fantasy series uh, on Twitch. So uh, keep an eye out on my Twitch. Seriously, at the moment. I, you know, I went through WP2 the other day and like organized everything into playlists properly. Um, I started looking at Twitch controls for the first time that I haven't done in a long time. There will be a lot happening very soon. And I'm really excited about it. You killed me last time. You sorry about that? Oh, really? I, 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 you don't have to apologise. It's not like I really knew what was going on anyway. There's an audio cue. NPC comment for the orb. So again, you guys are saying you pick up an orb, you get a special action, you use it to defeat the ads, right? That's what you guys are saying. All right. I, I'm assuming we're already here. By the way, we can just go straight on in. So there you go. Uh, objective: kill Ceres, the glaive of House Nephus. And you'll notice this is the corridor that the first story instance actually had us in, which is quite interesting. And we get this really striking, awesome visual. I love this room. Again, if the next map that they add is like this this world, Naos, but fully expanded, I'll be very, very keen. You know, talking about wanting a bloody environment, this is blood right here. So, yeah, and then we just glide down, and uh, we're going to start straight away here, guys. <laughs> Excuse me. Random dodge from me there, just for movement speed, frankly. See, I don't really know how to start this. Well, it worked. That's fine. Okay, we all have to personal spread here. Oh, my, see there, my mouse bug again. You see my firestorm on the left? That was my mouse, just randomly snapped over there. I'm aiming at Ceres, and it goes all the way over there. Yeah, don't ask me, it's just bizarre. I'm way too slow here. So yeah, then he used the wall. It's like a Sabbath of Flame wall. You'll recognize it, of course, from the new relic in the game, the, the relic of Ceres. And of course, it was there in the personal story as well. So then there's these patches on the ground, I guess. There were orbs moving into him. I'm not quite sure what was going on there. Here's a break bar. Again, I'm not contributing. God, this, sh this build is shit. I really don't like this build. So then, okay, I don't understand this. He splits into these forms, right? Now, the one you pick to kill determines what animation is about to get supercharged or something like that. I think. So, like, he's charging that up, right? So, if we killed that one first. Like, I think that animation, the, the, the giant charge up, that, like, moves quicker or something. The flame wall, if you pick the, the guy with the wall, it's, like, double walls and one moves counterclockwise. This thing here with the split, this is, like, the mechanic of the fight. And when the CM comes out, I think that'll be the main thing to think about. There's a green we need to stack, but we're obviously already all stacking. So, is it really a relevant mechanic? You tell me. I'm waiting in Earth to get more energy. Personal spread again. So, you see, we get double walls here. I think that... That this is based on, and he boon rips like mad with those. It's like really bad to get double walls, I think. Um, 
I think that's based on which ads we kill. But I don't know. I really don't know the mechanic. And I can't look at chat right now while I'm playing, obviously. But if you guys do, it would be really cool to hear. I'm not using Grand Finale at all well <laughs> in this. So we want to move out. Oh my god, that's so weird. I was expecting to be able to Thunder Punch in. Oh yeah, that one you can dodge. On Monk in Final Fantasy, you can like target an ally and, and like rush to them. So you can greed and then at the last second just rush to your allies. And I, I've been playing so much of that, I guess, that I had muscle memory for that while playing Ellie in Guild Wars 2. God, he sounds like he's in so much pain. I don't remember these voice cues sounding like this. Okay, double wall again. I don't know how to avoid this, really. This is just insane. Double dodge? Like, what the fuck? Is it even dodgeable? It doesn't look it. Oh, my God. What am I doing with my utilities? See, and he gets all these boons. So we want some boon rip. I think in the CM, it will probably be right to have some boon rip with you. Unless you can just avoid this completely. Yeah, these orbs, I think we go out and collect. We stop them going into him. Oh my god, I'm going all over the place. Okay, I can hope that maybe my water four is a combo. Okay, so we're here again. He splits. For a long time, I thought that him splitting was failing the break bar, but it's actually succeeding the break bar. I don't know what happens if you fail that break bar. Oh, this one's glowing. Do you see that? That one's glowing there. That's interesting. So what does that mean? We kill the glowing one last? Oh, no, that just means he has barrier, right? Yeah, he has barrier. Okay. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure it's been written a hundred times already in chat, so... Gimme, 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 gimme. See, we're back to one wall now, based on how we did that. But his, his probably his PB AoE charge up thing is probably going to be a lot nastier now. I used my earth field and I shouldn't have. See, the game here is we need to wait with our energy before we hit the earth field, and then we can do earth swap fire straight away, like back to back. There I couldn't really, because I had the earth five up still, but, you know. Oh, and I missed that. Whatever. Oh, personal again. Oh, I really appreciate how far you guys are moving out. I'm sure that's not efficient at all, but it's really useful for me, being a greedy bastard. Okay, there's a militia, militia shadow here. I guess we kill it. I don't know what happens if it goes in. More puddles. The puddles appear to do torment as well. <laughs> Here I was actually fast enough that my fire glyph wasn't quite up, but whatever. <coughs> my god. I feel like I got a hundred times more ill while speaking into the microphone here today. Okay, is that going quicker? No? I don't know then, I really don't. To me, return. Break bar, I can help with this one, never mind, too slow. Okay, and now this last 10%, he's just like in this burn phase where he just slams this big AoE out. You see, which does is blockable, it's doing zero damage to us. He just keeps doing that while you just grind out his last bit of health. And again, in CM, maybe that'll be really interesting to look at how they do that. But for the normal mode stuff, that's it. And, you know, that's, that's your daily or your weekly or whatever. That's it. You get a bunch of rewards. It's doing this, by the way. Like, I can preview the coffer here. This is what drops this. The Endless Cryptus Lord Combat Tonic. 
See? So this crazy thing, it makes you look like Pather. It doesn't make you look like him. It, at launch, it seemed like it might, but no, it makes you look like Pather. You've also got all these cool ascended items. There's a collection for these as well. The best one is the shield. The gluttony's palata. Look at that. Yes. It's like a pig with a wobbly face or whatever. Love that one. So yeah, when you open these, what you really want is the uh, the combat tonic. And apparently I have two. So ready? One, two, three, go. Two unidentified gear. Go. Okay, we got a Skyforge torch. But yeah, that's the idea. Um, and then obviously you get the, the, to the green shards. So what happens now is all the old strikes are all under the same currency. So you can do Ice Breed Saga strikes to get all the cool End of Dragons loot, which is really good. Um, but if you want the new stuff, it's these t these these shards, which will take a while to build up. So you, you can buy that tonic, ultimately, uh, as compensation if you get unlucky for long enough. But I think it's like 2,000, and I have like 180. So you can math out how many of these strike missions I've done. It can't be more than five. There you go. Look, it, co it costs 500. It's not even that much, actually. Jeez, that's cheap as shit. The other one is the Endless Wizard. Oh, it's Dagda. I cannot tell you how disappointed I was to see Dagda there. I was really thinking for a brief moment, I thought, is this going to be Isgarin? Is there an Isgarin combat tonic? Oh my god. I was ready to explode with excitement, but then I just see Dagda. <laughs> uh, why do I love flesh theme skins so much? I don't know, dude. It's just because they're different to normal stuff, right? Like, you don't get to see... I, I showed this up on a previous episode. Um... But, like, this expansion was made for my Flesh Abomination character. I need... I should have played this series on this character. It would have meant I was on Guardian, but who cares, right? Like, I could have played Will Bender or something. Look at this character. I made this years ago, and now there's a bunch of skins and things that, that complement it. It's just different, so that's why I like it. You know, if the game was full of this stuff, I'd probably be into flowers and pink things or, you know, real-life gear. So yeah, there you go. There's the two strikes. Hey guys, thank you very much to everyone who he did the call there and came and carried me through that and provided boons and, you know, you joined the instance really quickly and you left the instances really quickly. That was cool, guys. Thank you very, very much. That was a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, and the kind of the incentive with Guild Wars at the moment is you log in and you can do your daily strikes, which would mean you'd do one of those that you just saw and then you would go and do one from the Ice Food Saga Freynir it is, Freynir of Jormag, and one from Cantha, that's the Harvest Temple. Now, that's not CM, that's just regular Harvest Temple, which is a little bit long, fine, but, you know, it's easy. But you just do these three, and that's a really good way of getting a lot of currency. You just go in and do those, and then you go in. You... And I kind of have wanted to be in a rhythm with that, in a routine with that, but I haven't been. With Final Fantasy, there's this other thing where you just you click a button and it automatically match makes you in. In Guild Wars, you have to actually go through LFG and all that stuff, which is a little bit more annoying. But, you know, I have found, like I said, in my not in this post-game series, but in the original story series, there's the, these were really active. Unfortunately, now it's just full of sellers, which is fucking depressing. No, no, look at this. See, look how quick stuff comes up. I'm serious right now. I, like, it really feels like it's rejuvenated the scene. See, End of Dragons daily. See? Just join us at DPS. This guy's doing a raid wing. How, how populated is the raid stuff at the moment? By the way, if you want a tip about getting rid of the selling, just in the uh, search bar, type minus and then sell. Uh, it doesn't work if they're selling in other languages, I guess. <laughs> but, you know, for NA, that will work quite well. Um... So there you have it, guys. I think I think I know we're in the middle of the Skyscale collection stuff, but look, we've been going for a while here today. We're nearly at three hours. It's been lots of fun. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll we'll call it there. Thank you, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. I don't know how many episodes of this post game thing I'll do uh, because again, I, I don't know how much of it. I mean, there's definitely a lot of lore and stuff for us to look at, but I'll, I'll get my ducks in a row about that. Again, if I know I haven't done anything on Twitch for like a year and a half. Keep your eye on it, though, because I've been looking back at it, and I think my streams, I'll be porting them over. I think we'll go back to doing Twitch for stream stuff. So, yeah, uh, fingers crossed on all that. But thank you, everybody. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Let's not have too long of an outro here. And uh, take care. Thanks again for the donations and all the live chat and so on. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys. Oh, yeah, you can also block the seller's account. Yeah, that's also a thing people do. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good, good technique, too. All right, guys. Catch you later.